Alrighty, that was lively, I think. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Glad to have you guys back here. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving, those of you who celebrate that. And if you do not, I hope you had a pleasant week, regardless where you are from. Now, I just got off not even an hour ago, two-hour phone call with Mike Lee. And we're talking about, of course, the XP 15,000. So many things that are really great about that printer and why we are also pretty worried that Epson might pull it out of production, you know, in the next year or so, possibly. Who knows if they catch on to what we are doing. In other words, we're making that printer to be probably the best, best 13-inch wide die base printer out there at this moment okay there's a canon 187 something or other that is also available it's just not as well built but the output is, seems seems to be good almost as good as a pro 100 but not quite as good as a pro 100 and i got some pro 100 results here to show you also some uh xp 15,000 results we're going to print one by the way i was when I was playing that music, you saw me uh, probably doing something. I was setting up Q image with one of my images that I turned into a painting, and we're going to go ahead and print it onto just Epson. I think it's um, something luster paper. I don't know my Epson papers that well. I don't remember them. Uh, this paper I've had forever has been sitting on a box back there, among many others. 
Uh, the reason I have so much of that is when I bought a 3800 used unknown condition from someone on eBay, it came with about probably 50, 60 pounds of paper, okay? In boxes, odd sizes too. Uh, some of the uh, papers were in that European type uh, size. So not the, not the American, you know, uh, inches, but in the uh, A4, A5, A, you know, that type of A3 plus, A3, and, and that sort of thing. So anyway, I was able to use that paper to do my initial setup print, which was, of course, the, uh, you know, the standard image that we always use to determine our printer's output. It's been a fun week, let me tell you. Um, Nathan was completely off of school for the whole week. We got to see him once or twice. I think Jeremy and he came over. Jeremy helped me move something out of the uh, laundry room, uh, an old sink that was actually made out of lead and lined with concrete. It was about 300 pounds, I swear to God. It was heavy. We moved it out. I got my new utility sink in there, but of course... Yeah, because this house was built in 63. The main drain pipe doesn't line up with the one for the sink. I could pull it out, of course, but that will then prevent me from being able to use the existing faucet. You're supposed to install faucets on your new sink, but I want to keep my existing uh, copper plumbed faucets that are already there. Why not? So um, I got a I got a space of about two inches a mismatch. So yeah, I could get elbows and all of that, but I I just went ahead and got some uh, flex pipe, the expandable pipe, and connected it, and it is perfect and it's draining just fine. So that's done. Check off the uh, to do list. So now we're back back to do what we love to do, and that is of course messing around with our printers, printing images and coming up with options for the future. They are diminishing, folks. The things the things are getting really, really bad out there. Now, if you're an OEM user and you're the type of person who is able to afford it, whether it is for hobby reasons, just for fun reasons, or for professional reasons, which is what you should be using anyway, um, that seems to be like the only option coming in the future. Um, we talked about other expression models from Epson. Remember, I've been accused of being a Canon fanboy. And uh, for the last year and a half, I've been concentrating on just Canon printers. But even those, even those are going to be more difficult to use if you choose to go third party. Okay. If you do not, then you're fine. Any of the printers available will serve you just fine. You're using OEM inks. You're not concerned about using third-party inks, which require a certain kind of hacking to take place, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, that's that's what the future brings. By the way, this is a... I think you've seen me didn't drink this before. Really, really delicious. If you can find it or something similar to that, make sure you get it. It is absolutely lovely. And so anyway, going back to the 15,000, why the 15,000? Why the Canon uh, 8320 for a letter size or a four and smaller size? I got to get those terms correct. You know what I mean. And something that will do pretty much everything for you. Yeah, 150 bucks. Okay, 8320 or any of the other 83 something models because the drivers for the 8300 series and it covers all of those printers in that particular family great driver works really well it has lots of options you can print on discs it's got a very nice tray for your disc your printable discs you can do copy just right off of the panel no need to even have it connected to the computer right now i took it upstairs it's upstairs with my wife's um other stuff and uh, she can use it directly from her computer which is awesome and so she's very happy about that and you can then refill those original cartridges after i begin to modify them it requires a little hole to be drilled in a specific location you got a plug that i already have which then 
It's used to seal it after you have filled it. And you can fill it to a little bit higher capacity than the cartridge came with as a setup, for instance. And so we have all of those weights available. What the empty weight will be, we don't know just yet, but we know what the full weight is, and we can actually increase that a couple of grams or equivalent ml of ink, and it'll be fine. The only catch is the cartridges are opaque, okay? So you can do it visually. I mean, once it starts getting near the top, you're going to see, oh, it's going to overflow. Well, don't go to that level know what the weight is before you reach that level and you'll be fine so if it weighed 23.8 for instance which is i think what they uh, originally weighed we can probably go to 25 total grams okay and then you will not overflow because there is a little bit of extra space which we access by drilling that hole in that specific location we're going to show all of that in video, very close, uh, detailed type video, so you'll be able to see what we are talking about. The same thing applies to the XP 15,000, okay? And again, two hours today, we went through everything he has discovered. And again, this is not the first time Epson has designed a ink cartridge in this manner. There are other formats of cartridges that have the same internal configuration. The difference between the XP15000 OEM and these cheap refillable, no, not cheap. These are expensive. I paid 66 bucks for a set of these. They don't even come with a chip, $66 on eBay. And they are inferior, it turns out to be, okay? I have been told already. Um, I'm going to ramble. Yes, forgive me for that. But there's so many different subjects that we discussed today. He showed us last time he was on. Remember when he showed us on the on the on the 8320, the he was showing us about the um, effects of the blue ink. Well, he kind of did that behind the scenes. Also, the effects of the red ink with what's available as far as third party right down and so and his inks that he is developing i'm going to be receiving them in less than a week by the way and i'll take you to his site and we can actually read whatever he has posted on that subject so so far because he started using these he noticed that after gosh after just a few uses this this and and port right here began to lose its seal well you can't have that happen absolutely not that is not allowed okay not allowed so it's it's something that we cannot accept okay that will happen even more on assist i know that company in the uk has a continuous system for it i hope those who use it are are getting great results i hope so now i'm leery about getting one because mike told me these cartridges do not hold the contact area that you need to maintain consistently okay and then you start getting air and these are these are sponge cartridges hello epson doesn't use sponge cartridges right not for a couple of decades okay they use a similar cartridge as this, but a lot more sophisticated internally. I thought, oh, my G. Okay. Um, did I make a mistake by getting this printer? Yeah, possibly, right? I thought when I was looking at what the internals look like and what we would need to do to be able to take advantage of that excellent performance of that original cartridge and how in the heck are we going to refill those and at first it was going to be very simple very simple but it turns out that there's other things happening internally and he dissected one dissected a couple actually and uh 
showed me exactly what you would need to do if you were to make the mistake of letting, let's assume this is an XP 15,000 OEM cartridge, let it, you know, you get used up to be on a certain, a certain level. There's something that gets triggered in the mechanism that controls that that diaphragm okay it's a metallic diaphragm it's really neat he's going to show us all that next week he didn't want to do it today you know why i'll tell you why let's see how many people we have 33 right now we've been on for i don't know 17 minutes a lot of people are traveling back to you know they went on on family trips for thanksgiving you know against their recommendations by the powers that be you know but anyway that's fine they may be on the road and they may not be home so he thought well maybe this weekend would not be a good idea to do this let's wait till next weekend and then i will i will do this epic show for you and i thought all right can't wait so he's going to show us every aspect and i'm going to ask these challenging questions to him we've already kind of sort of reverse uh rehearsed this but this is going to be for you guys benefit and why are we pushing the heck out of this printer? Again, because the, the only one so far that will allow us to do this. And later on, I'm going to talk about the so-called uh, chip solution, okay? I'm not going to mention companies here. But there are a couple that are pushing the same product. And we're going to discuss that because it gets a little bit touchy, okay? And so... Imagine, and I'll show you my results in a minute. Not in a minute. You know how long it takes me. Ha, huh, more than that. I'm going to show you my results. I'm going to show you the before and after, meaning before with the original firmware and after. And you're going to see my ink report, ink level report, go from a very minor drop that occurred during installation to back to full. So right now it's running as if the cartridges were full, but in fact they are not. They have dropped about an eighth of an eighth, about an eighth of a, of a uh, volume, let's just say, you know, in in ink levels. And so, but they still show full. So, how do we tackle the refilling? Well, he's going to discuss all of that. He told me that I can. There is some very critical points along that route from full too empty that you must never go past okay the problem is we don't know when we are near those points because we'll be running always full okay and that's the catch so we're going to go by weight and by weight alone and he's got all of the weights everything he's got charts prepared all of that stuff for us to enjoy so at this point in about a few days I'm supposed to get his inks. He told me to go ahead and just top off these cartridges. How? Just like a Pro 10. Upside down. Dribble ink. Okay. And then with aluminum tape, the same aluminum tape they use to seal ducts for your HVAC systems. We're going to plug a little hole that's located right around here. Okay, we're going to just tape over that little hole. At that point, as long as we refill re or top off the cartridges regularly at a certain level of weight, if it goes beyond a certain level, it's too late. Then you got to do an internal invasive modification, which I don't really want to tackle, to tell you the truth. And I don't know many of you would be willing to go that route, okay? Now, on the other hand, let's forget about all of this refilling. The normal cartridges for the the 15,000 are very reasonably priced. Let me take you to Epson's site. I hope I didn't, yeah, did I? Here we go. Let me go over here. Let me delete this. We don't need that anymore. And we're going to go ahead and pop this up here. 
And I think there's even a deal that they will offer us. Hang on one sec. All right, so we are at Epson.com, and uh, we picked the uh, inks, ink finder right here. We chose our model, and here it is. So they got a, a, a deal going until Monday. Um, upgrade to, uh, to uh, free two-day shipping. Okay, big deal. Free shipping. I don't know what they would charge you normally, but look what they charge for a single OEM cartridge. $11. Okay, now you can buy the three pack for $32.99, which saves you a whole penny. Okay, wow. So it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> you just buy it individually. Now, where is the red and where is the gray? Well, those are only available in Excel size, and those will run you $22. But once you get those two, and you can buy for $43, okay, $44 for the two. Again, you save nothing. So either buy, you know, individually or, or as a pack. That is a lot better than the normal $15, $16 per cartridge. And imagine what I paid. I mean, I could show you what I paid for um, my refillables. Let me see if I still have that open. No, I, I, I deleted it. It's, it's, it's just terrible. Uh, it was like $61 with... Uh, shipping uh included i think i had to pay tax on it even so anyway yeah ridiculous price and then still you got to buy a ten dollar chip to be able to use it like oem so for the ten dollar for a regular cartridge heck the chip alone cost ten dollars okay do, do you get me the chip alone for the refillable cartridges cost ten dollars and this is not a sponge car this is a very, I mean, I was amazed at the engineering that is living inside that little cartridge box, okay? It kind of gives you an idea of, of why OEM cartridges cost so much and why if you can figure out a way to refill them, why would you use anything else but? Because the reliability is there, the repeatability of the process is there and also the consistency of ink flow, which you will not get, unfortunately. As much as I want these to work, apparently they will not. Oh, guess what? I'm gonna give it a try. I don't care because that's an Epson printhead. It's not gonna burn out, okay? So I'm gonna try it anyway. But I will try and concentrate on my OEM cartridges. So what I will be doing, I gotta put out a few, I gotta put out a little bit of money, and I'm gonna order a set of these four main colors plus the XL or the larger size internally. They're the same size, it's just that they have blocked the ability of that bag to expand to its full level. Now, doing the process we're going to be doing, and he's gonna show us next week. We will be able to add, I think he said, like 2 ml extra. Now, the XL ones have about 5 ml extra ink compared to the regular standard cartridges. Okay. Now, yeah, but Jose, every time you take them out, let's go back to me here. Every time you take them out to weigh them, um, and and then if you choose to then refill them at that point by dribbling ink until that port, again, it's like a nylon. It's not a sponge like the Pro 10 cartridges. It's not a spongy fibrous material. It's more like a nylon um, cloth, a nylon material, woven material, and underneath there is some kind of padding, some kind of absorbent padding that the ink passes through. As soon as you see that little port surface glistening, it's becoming wet and saturated, stop. Stop at that point. Squeeze and blot and then let go. And that way the, the internal bag will be filled to as, as high of a capacity as it can handle without being overfilled to the point where if you flip it upside down, ink is going to dribble out. Okay, You don't want to reach that point. And remember... You will not need chips anymore, okay, at that point, because we're going to be using a chipless type solution here. 
Did I say that? Yes, I did. Okay, here's the problem. And right now I am I am on the fence as to what to do about this. As you know, one company provided me with two serial numbers for the XP15000, one for the P800 that I am going to give away. And tomorrow is the drawing. Now, here's the here's the deal. The one company that gave me those serial numbers, by the way, they are all the same, whether you buy them from one company or another company. So I don't know who is sourcing, who is the source of these numbers, these serial numbers, activation numbers, if you will. Who? So somebody has to be generating these with a key generator. And a key generator, what it does, it generates unique keys that are logical so that a particular product accepts them. See, that's that's what that's what they do. So if two entities are selling these, they have to be coming from one location. I don't know, I don't know what the location is, to tell you the truth, to be honest. I wish I did, but I do not. So there are two ways to do this. If you choose to, for instance, you're running nothing but OEM inks, you don't care about refilling at all. And there's a new uh, a new um, firmware for an Epson blank, blank, blankety blank or a Canon blankety blank. You download it, or if you're if you're um, have installed the application for updating, you can do it through there. It will find the next the correct new firmware, download it for you, and install it. You really don't have to do anything except sit here and watch it happen. But when you're trying to downgrade or upgrade or do whatever it is you're doing to render a printer chipless, it's a different operation. For the Canon printers and for the Epson printers, I mean, not Canon, forget Canon. For the Epson printers, one company provides you with a method to set your printer in what they call service mode, okay? One button, second button, third button, fourth button, while the printer is off. And all of a sudden, the printer comes to life in service mode, and you see that on your panel. This, I think, only works for printers that have LCDs on them from Epson, okay? The other one, however, acts just like Epson would act. Download it, double-click it, and that that entity on its own will perform the download if it hasn't already done so and the installation to your printer. It will extract it and it will send it to your printer and install it, okay? So two different approaches basically for the same thing. Here's the bad news. And this is why tomorrow I'm going to make a video specific to whoever wins this PA-100 chipless serial number that i can give it away they better first of all be on a windows machine it will not work on mac none of these things work on mac okay just be aware of that none of these hacks if you will work on mac os only on windows especially the, your wic tool or any other other companies that allow you to reset ink counters all that stuff okay only windows so the winner has to be someone who has a P800 from the United States that is locked against third-party use and wants to unlock it and make it chipless. It has to be on Windows, and it has to be from the USA or Canada. Otherwise, I will delete that and re-pick another winner until I find one that meets those, meets those categories, those requirements, because otherwise it will be useless to you. If you're in Europe and you have a PA-100, you're already unlocked. You don't have nothing to worry about. Only us here in the United States and Canada. So, or North America, as I call. I don't know whether they include Mexico or not. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Uh, anybody from Mexico that has a PA-100 can tell me whether theirs is locked or unlocked, okay? So, my worry is that you may encounter some difficulty installing this and i let me tell you just like pontius pilot did i wash my hands of this when i award you this you are on your own okay you will perform this according to the instructions from either company because you'll be able to use either one so go either go to 
chiplasolutions.com or inkchip.net. Download the software, download the instructions, and proceed at your own risk. If you don't want to do that after I give you that serial number, toss it. Okay? Toss it. Now, here's what happened with us. So Mike Lee has a 15,000. Jose Rodriguez has a 15,000. He took it upon himself to do it before me. So I had sent him one of my two numbers. He downloaded the required uh, applications and proceeded to do it. Well, six times in a row, he got errors, non-read errors. In other words, read error, and it said dot minus one, something like that. Basically, what it does, it doesn't see the printer. It doesn't see that the, the firmware was up, like, uploaded into the printer, okay? Because once it's uploaded into the printer, it will recognize it. It will say, hey, you have this and that printer. All of the ID configuration is shown. And then you hit to activate online. You copy and paste that, that activation number. And it generates a recovery code that will allow you to come back later if you, if you screw up and upgrade by accident firmware and you're back now out of chipless. In other words, you're back to a normal printer and you want to return back to chipless using that same serial number. It will allow you to do that. So you copy and paste that whole string as huge onto a notepad and uh, save it. And then if you need to access it later, you do. That's when it works correctly. But apparently, uh, I've been uh, visiting both forums on both companies and uh, targeting that printer. And the mistakes or, or errors that we were experiencing have been experienced by other people as well. So finally, what I did was I used the serial number, but I went through uh, uh, chiplessolutions.com, used their applications. Again, it was still a problem, and I'll tell you why. It began to install the firmware. I think what you get is just a an installer, not the actual firmware, but an installer. The installer then connects to the correct firmware over there and then downloads it, trickle downloads it, and installs it. And you see your progress bar increase. When it got to 97, 98%, it stopped and said installation stop and your firmware did not be was not installed would you like to try again or go next well i didn't know what would happen if i went next so i said install again and he went through the process again when he got to about 24 it froze and i thought oh dear lord now what control delete i closed all of the everything that was happening and rebooted everything and I did not reboot that. Now, this printer went and showed all of the different things that it was doing while the firmware was being installed as it was supposed to. It actually powered off. It powered back on. All of the things that they claim will happen took place. But I didn't know whether I was chipless or not. So I, 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 I rebooted my computer. I'm crossing my fingers. I, I went over to the printer and I used the panel and I did an also check. Came right out, printed perfectly. I said, Phew, at least it's back to normal. Yeah, because I looked and it showed ink drop from the previous, you know, several jobs. So I knew, okay, this is fine. It's back to normal. Then I went ahead and looked at my original nozzle check that I did when I installed that printer. Let me show you. Here's a critical factor, by the way. Here we go. Let me get all of these little papers here. Now, when you do a nozzle check, I believe on Epson always and also on Canon, you get that you get the nozzle check is perfect. It's perfect. This is my original. This is the second one. I want you to look at the number right here. My original number, that's firmware number, and my new, oh, wait a minute, wrong one. Yeah, I want you to look at that number, sorry. NW12 something, what is it? 12JB, okay? 
That's my original. The new one is 07K7. And I went, whoa, what's going on? I have a new firmware installed. Why am I not seeing full inks? I looked on the panel, and I was not seeing full inks. So this is my ink report. And if you look very carefully, right at the edge, so look at that thin lower line. You see how it extends a little bit further out? That's the original ink level. And then the solid wider line is the new ink level. This is your maintenance cartridge level right here. So that, that lost a little bit. So in other words, the space that's left, that means less capacity, in other words. So then I went back and I reread the instructions on the installer. And come to find out, hey, dummy, you were supposed to power your printer on and off. So I did. Came back on. And now, if you look very, it's very hard to tell because I didn't really use a lot of ink to begin with. But look at the, this is the before and this is the after. Notice the thin line and the, and the thick line are at the same level now. So now my, my printer is showing always full. And so that's what I had to go through. And it took me several attempts. And I was like, what the heck? People are going to go nuts trying to do this. It's possible. You can do it. But the instructions tell you otherwise. And your results are, again, otherwise. So that's where the panic sets in. And so... I went back with the ink, 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 uh, chipletsolutions.com, went into their forum, and yeah, they just say, oh, the firmware will never reach 100%. Oh, gosh, now you tell me. It'll it'll stop at 90-something, and they will then tell you, you know, it didn't install. Just control all the lead your way out of it and repower your, your printer. Well, that's going to scare the living, you know, what out of people. People don't want that. People want something that actually works. Well, it actually does work, technically speaking. But, you know, you don't have to go through that kind of fear. Okay, you shouldn't have to go through that. So at least now, we are at a point where this printer is not chipless, which was our goal, ultimately, you know, all the time. Now, P800. Uh, are you going to have a problem? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to do mine. I got a decoder board installed. I would have to take the back the back panel off and rewire my motherboard. Heck no. I'm not going to do that. They gave it to me for free, so I'm going to give it away for free. But at your own risk, you're going to do that on your own. Don't come back to me. Okay? Go to them. Go to the forum if you have any problem now. If you run into a problem, you can always install the, you know, download the uh, so, uh, firmware from them and install it, and you'll be back to normal again. So, you know, from Epson, that is. And you'll be back up to uh, running. So that's all I got to say about that. And so um, now what we're going to be concentrating in is just basically um, getting that printer ready to go for uh, refilling. Now, let me show you. Again, you saw the prices for the Epson cartridges, right? Not that bad. Not that bad at all. So that'll give me the luxury to uh, possibly install um, or have like a, a, a pair of sets, you know, two sets of cartridges ready to be uh, always kept topped off and so, and so forth. Now, here is the forum for the 15,000 print errors. Done the firmware downgrade and activation. We, they call it downgrade, call it upgrade, call it sideway, uh, whatever. Side grade, whatever you want to call it. It's just an installing of a, of a firmware that has been hacked. 
to be always full. When I print the pages, it's another thing. This happened to Mike as well. He got it installed, and then he was printing blank pages. Well, he was terrified, and he contacted me. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to answer my phone at the time. And so he, he went nuts for a whole day, wondering what to do. He just kept reinstalling. Finally, he got it to work. So that's another problem that can happen, OK? Um, from what I read, this error has something to do with the printhead overheating. I don't think that's the, the, the error, because uh, if you immediately go to uh, back to your normal firmware, it prints, OK? So let's see. Somebody got an error. Uh, that supposedly uh, meant that the print head or board was overheating. I don't think that's the case. I think that may be something else going on with that person's printer. But anyway, uh, all of a sudden, <laughs> this is what this is what Mike and I were discussing. This, he said, I have a feeling because there's a difference, a, a vast difference. Let me go back to me. Because I got to cover this before I show you this. There is a huge difference between the way you install using ink chip and the, and the way you install using chipless solution. Okay? With ink chip, you have to put your printer in service mode. And then I believe, I, I don't know for sure whether when you download the firmware, you're actually downloading a firmware and not just an installer that will access the firmware externally, OK? I don't know. But you have to go in service mode. Once you do that, then the process begins. And in Mike's case, in my case, it went fairly quickly. And to me, that meant that, yeah, I am accessing the firmware that's inside in my in my in my um, download folder. Okay, so that's why it's going so quick. Then when you actually fail at that because it doesn't recognize it, it doesn't recognize that your printer even lives. Okay, and you go back to Chipless Solution and use their downloader. It comes on a trickle download. It gets installed slowly, but it fails at the very end. And then you stop the process. It says, oh, that's normal. It will fail. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? Download the, uh, you know, you stop the process and then reboot everything. And now it works. Well, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Either the firmware is bad. Something is wrong here. And then I saw this, and here's this is the kicker. The admin for Inkchip, okay? Look at that little dude, right? Please try this new file for you. Language problem here. And there's a new file. And I'm gonna I'm gonna download that and compare it to the one I previously downloaded. Upward, upload the firmware which I sent. Switch on in normal mode. Just turn on the button. Don't put printer in program update mode. That's service mode. No need to press a few buttons while you turn on the printer. They're using the same as chipless solution. OK, so now let's stop here before we get in trouble, right? Let's stop here. And this is, this is why I, I, I'm a little leery as to how am I going to approach this because they're after me to tell them what happened. So one thing for sure is they, they will not be able to access and deactivate the serial number that I used. Okay, that's that's water under the bridge already. So the same thing with Mike. I, I just have that P800 now software uh, activation code that I'm going to give away. And again, like I said, this this is on your own now. You didn't spend a penny on it. I didn't spend a penny on it. I'm giving it to you. You install it. Use either method you want to choose. OK, don't come back to me. I would suggest you use chipless solutions, OK, and just keep that serial number. Use their system to install it. 
and it should work it should work other people have done it and it does work so hmm who really owns this okay boy do i want to get into this discussion probably really i don't okay but who really owns this okay who is the original entity that owns this and who i don't want to use the that word obtained it from the other guy and now is using it using a slightly different method to install and now they had to revert the 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 suggestion to that guy was to and he probably got that new source from mm, someone else you see what i mean it gets very very uh, leery here so again uh, i'm just glad that i got it to work i'm good to go mike is good to go on it and this this week during the week of course he has to you know tackle orders and whatever for inks and other products but he's going to then devote the rest of the week to getting all of the test prints done and i've seen the the uh, oem and his ink comparisons it's almost indiscernible the difference none at all okay side by side so i'm not i'm not leery at all to top off my original cartridges which still have like 80 percent of the original ink in them okay i'm not i'm not leery or worried at all to do that I, I apparently if you do that then you will not um trigger a certain event that then requires an internal modification which i want to avoid like the plague okay i don't want to deal with that at all uh, unless he wants to do them for me, I don't want to deal with it. And I'm sure a lot of you would not want to deal with that either. So, so far from what I have seen online, and he, he got his DSLR to connect via um, StreamYard with me today. And so it looks really good. Oh, the rendition was just flawless. And the neutrality of the two standard images that he printed Again, OEM, of course, I expect it to be neutral in his inks. It, it was great. So I, I am tickle pink to get ready. I'm going to be using the heck out of that printer because it's going to be a huge competitor against the Pro 100, okay? It will be, definitely. I see that coming. Uh, it's a hell, of a, lot, a hell of a lot cheaper than, say, buying a, a Pro 200, which cannot officially be refilled uh, unless you disable ink monitoring which is basically what we're doing here it's just that at least we get to see the colors of the channels and being uh, always full with the other system you don't see anything you see nothing you just assume that you have ink in your cartridges they are opaque now the one option for the pro 200 possible buyers out there is this you get yourself some cartridges from say rick johnson cli 41s okay with cli 41 chips and you refill those keep them refilled and then just wait wait until each one of those pro 200 opaque cartridges go empty disable ink monitoring that channel take it out and pop a cli 42 refill with pc inks okay your ink monitoring doesn't work anymore it doesn't matter but now at least you can see how much ink you have ding 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 right makes absolute total sense so of course you can refill your opaque cartridges canon users have been doing this for quite a while now but it's a blind process you do it by weight and since you're dealing with sponges, you got to keep track of that sponge quality. Let me, let me. You got to make sure you see that white upper space here, not, not the top. That's normal OEM results. But that half of the sponge that has a different density, when you refill it, it may not absorb ink properly because it was allowed to go empty. Okay. But when we start off with a flushed cartridge, it will saturate all the way to the top. 
And the way we monitor that cartridge's condition is by looking at it, okay? If you start seeing little white, little patches of white, that means air. That means air got in there. And air doesn't print, does it? Air actually kills your printhead. Thermal printheads do that. So you want to maintain as good a saturation level constantly as you go through these refilling cycles. And I've told you this a million times and on videos and in person here, always top off when the cartridge is low before you start losing ink out of the sponge side of the cartridge. Once you allow it to do that, ink disappears very quickly and it gets replaced by air, which may not be displaced when you try to refill. So catch it before that. You keep these little practices in mind, you will have successful refilling, okay? You will have a very good experience and not a bad one, which is very probable, again, since we're not supposed to do this anyway. None of this is intended to be done, but we have found out ways of doing it and allow you to then enjoy printing at a much lower cost. Wow, that was a big opener, wasn't it? Yeah. Let's say hello to everybody here. We got we got 43. That's really good. That's really good for a Thanksgiving weekend. So let me let me um start with Charles Verbruggen. We're gonna post that into the window here. I'm going to take a little drink. Later, we're going to look at some prints as well. And I will take some questions and answers. Let's see. Do I have anything else posted ready to go? Yeah, we're going to look at Precision Colors page. And uh, let's see. And we're going to go ahead and close this one. I just want to get it this ready. Okay. So Charles is from Antwerp in Belgium. And uh, he owns a 9500 Mark II. Jerry Lonkel. Uncle Jerry. Canon Pro 100 from Canada. Montreal. Uh, to do, I can't do that. 12. And he didn't share what printer he owns. And of course, our young lady from Belgium is here with us. And I uh, hope everything is doing uh, going well over there. Nathaniel Booth uh, emailed me today. He said he lost track of some of his images in Lightroom. And I have Lightroom. Uh, open and minimize here so we're going to go through i am not a huge cataloger in lightroom i just install i just you know i i do the the importation and then basically when i'm done i don't care anymore i've done what i needed to do but i'll give you a few hints as to how to keep track of your imported files and how lightroom actually works which is uh a little bit strange and a lot of people don't really realize this is how it works but he says, it's always a pleasure for those who are new to this show. Jose is a great resource for your printing needs and a source of information. Thanks, Jose. Thanks again. Well, thank you for the nice words. We appreciate you being here with us. And he's a neighbor of mine up in Baltimore. I'm down in the D.C. area, uh, the north part of D.C. near Bethesda, Rockville, Wheaton, and, of course, the little village of Kensington, which is where I live. Emmanuel says, hello, I print on a P600 with cone inks in France, Normandy. Gorgeous place, gorgeous place. Went there to see the uh, World War II memorials and all of that when I was stationed in Belgium. Uh, George says, uh, Canon Pro 10S, Pro 1000. Nikos from Greece is here, El Greco. Uh, he has a TM200 and an 8350. And I wonder how that differs from the 8320. Richard Bender, Hagerstown again with us, R3000. Awesome. I hope everything's going well out there, Western Maryland. Uh, Richard. Uh, Sean Meyer. Hi, Jose. Happy Thanksgiving. I have a question. If there are, if there's a drying time on the PGI 72 cards after you flush them out, 
not the 782s, no, sir. Um, flush them out, and the trick is, now, I don't know whether you're using a little adapter to flush them in and out. In other words, let's see. I used to have one of those adapters, and I have misplaced it, unfortunately. Basically, it's just one of these little clips, and you just drill a little hole that's the same diameter as a needle, and you cut the needle off with a Dremel tool so that it is about an eighth of an inch, insert it through the hole, and I, I just glue it in place with some uh, thick uh, cyanoacrylate glue, crazy glue, and I use Activator. You can get that in a hobby shop. It's a spray that will harden that rock hard, and it'll stick so strongly that it's very difficult to actually break it off. And then you attach a needle, a syringe, I should say, like so. Let me get this. You attach a syringe, and then you attach this whole little unit to your cartridge. Your syringe is full of water, and you just inject, you know, pull back, collapse the bag, fill the bag, collapse it, fill it, collapse it. Repeat that several times until it's clean, and then suck out all of the liquid and air. Remove that. Get a new syringe if you want to. Load it with just a little bit of ink, just that much. You're going to waste a little ink when you flush a cartridge. Inject that ink, shake, and pull that ink out. That will extract the ink and also any residual water because you don't want to over-dilute your new load of ink. So I have done that in a video. If you go back to the 9500 uh, printer playlist, you will see one of those videos in there will cover that process. It's actually quite simple. You can actually refill those cartridges using the same process. Use the adapter, basically, especially when you buy a cartridge that has been allowed to just dry. In other words, the person who used it threw away his very valuable clip. And then that cartridge was declared empty, as these can be. You can run them until they're dead empty and probably put them in a bag and let this thing just, this sponge right here, just get all gunky and dried up and, and, and so forth. And the bag then expanded back out. The bag was collapsed, but when it lost that surface tension of being wet, okay, by drying out, it expanded back out. That's part of the science of the XP15000, by the way, okay? So when that happens, your bag is full of air. How are you going to put ink in it? right? So you have to flush it, get it wet again, use that adapter, and then you can load a syringe with like 15 milliliters of ink, collapse, in other words, a larger syringe, maybe a 20, load 15, pull back to re collapse the bag. That means all the air will come out, and then you can inject the ink in, okay? And if you measure your ink volume correctly, you will then be able to fill that cartridge capacity simply in about three seconds with a syringe with ink and that adapter, okay? Some people have actually made those adapters and sold them online. They're that good. Now, if you need to add a few more drops, then you go to your bottle where your ink source originally lived and dribble, dribble a couple of drops until the external sponge begins to glisten. Squeeze it, blot it, and then let go. That can be reinstalled as long as you, of course, have reset the chip to full. Which a lot of people don't understand. Why do I have to reset the chip when I refill? Why uh, Can I refill without resetting the chip? Would you like your gas tank in your automobile or petrol tank in your automobile to be filled and yet the gauge not show you that it is full? Right? You would not want that. You want to have a system where the ink level is shown full when your cartridge is also full. If you reset and not refill, uh, there's a discrepancy there. You see that? You're going to go empty. The chip says, I still have ink. The printhead's going to overheat. That's a no-no. You don't want that. Or as people say, that's a no-go. So anyway, going back to Mike real quick. 
He promised us an, an epic, epic show next week. Okay. So I, I can't wait myself. I hope I can accomplish some of the things that I have set to do this week. And I don't know whether I showed you guys what I got from Data Color last week. So I got the Elite version. This is actually, I thought it was going to be the cheaper one. This is actually the more costly one. I installed the driver yesterday. Went through a couple of little checks with it. I registered everything. We're going to be doing a video where I am going to literally recalibrate my monitor. And we'll see what kind of changes from the current condition performed by the i1 Pro 2. Okay, the, the big dog. Okay, we'll see if there are any improvements. If it's absolutely identical, if it is, then that's not bad because this thing is amazing okay so if it can if it can live up to that result then we're good to go and i will recommend the heck out of it boy that thing is gassy mm. and the ginger is very strong but it's good for your stomach okay let's see so yeah um there is no drying time you just you can flush them um add a little bit of ink flush that again in and out and then fill them up with water there's no drying. There's no sponge to dry like a uh, CLI 42 or blindly. Can you imagine you flushing whatever cartridge nomenclature uh, the Pro 200 will have? I don't want to do that. I don't want to. I don't want to flush a a uh, opaque cartridge. I can't see what's going on inside. Whether I really flushed it correctly or not, you see. So it makes no sense. Uh, I think I think we'll be able to get away with using. Uh, the CLI 42 cartridges instead, especially since we're going to kill ink monitoring anyway. No luck with my XP 15,000. What do you mean, no luck? I, you're having problems with um, the ink chip? Let me know real quick. I have you here. I need to know on the spot. Please let me know as soon as you can. I'll put it on the bottom. Um, add that to the chat, and then I'll be able to see it, and I'll tell you what I had to do, okay? Happy holidays, Jose. Pro 10 only worry is how many prints before the waste pads become saturated. On the Pro 10, uh, you do 40 to 13 by 19 prints per, more, per month with SIG edition inks. I don't know those. Uh, I do not print borderless. Well, printing volume really has not that much to do with waste ink generation. Okay. So don't worry, don't be too worried. If you're printing off and you're gonna run your your predetermined um, so-called you know uh, cleaning cycles that the, they are programmed into the printer, but most of your ink is gonna go on to on to you know create creation of prints. And those pads, from what I've been told by by precision colors, are humongous. Um, my Pro 100 is seven and a half years old, more than that now. And so far, so good. I don't even know how much time I have left, but I got two other machines waiting, brand new ones. So no worries there. But anyway, yeah, it's not printing often that will fill up your wasting pads because every time you every time you restart it, it runs a clean cycle. So print, print, print. The fact that you're printing that much is actually better. Joseph Casa. Casa. Hello, Jose. I'm... I'll be getting an Epson Pro 4900. Oh, oh, it has 11 or so cartridges. What do you recommend for testing purposes? It's expensive if it has dried the heads. I tried using ultrasonic cleaning. Why are you getting that printer, my friend? Okay. I, I, I don't want to ruin your day, but here's another one. The cost of shipping. Uh, have you already purchased it? The reason I ask is because that printer was replaced with the uh, Sure Color P5000. Okay, same ink palette. In other words, same number of cartridges and channels. But the 4900 just it was it was a huge huge um, failure by Epson. It had so many mechanical problems and printhead problems. And nobody can make them work. No one can make them work. So all I can say, if you can get out of this, 
please get out of this right now because you're getting into a headache I don't think you want, okay? And I'm not saying that because I have one. I, I'm saying that from what I have heard multiple time and time and time and time again, okay? Uh, it's, it's nothing but a nightmare. Yeah, I, I, I would not get it. Charles Ingalls. There is another source for the popular China shopping sites. If you don't mind waiting three to four weeks, typical price range is 10 to $12 shipping included for full set of XP 15,000. Full set of what? Of um, cartridges? Uh, if that's what you mean, thank you, but I'm not going to be using them anymore. I'm going to be using the um, OEM. And again, if, if if you reach a point where after multiple removals and installations, you start losing the seal, because it can happen. They're only meant to be used once. So they're built to a certain level of withstanding reuse and reuse and reuse. So you just buy a new set of cartridges, $10, $11 each. And I think it was $21 for the XL, uh, red and the uh, gray. And start again. That's it. Now, if, if these cartridges are proven to be super reliable over and over and over, then, you know, then maybe yes. Uh, for me, it's too late. I already have them, so no problem. Okay. Hello, my friend. This is Tango. I took your channel with other YouTube examples from teachers. Webinar using clean background or using a personal trustable background fitting to a subject here printing no joke what are you talking about you're talking about the um, background of people who are teaching or this is for you for your school hmm okay Robert Minix will say with the bladder and the XP 15,000 cartridges you have to drill a hole in the correct side no no hole no hole drilled no there is no hole to be drilled yeah that will that will really ruin things believe me um we're going to disclose all of that next week don't worry it, it'll it'll all become clear next week just like the pro one the pro 100 there's no hole to be drilled you're going to just add literally physically this is chroma optimizer that's why it's clear you're going to add the liquid directly to the external exit port right there okay and it's going to enter as long as that that bladder is able to re-expand and at some point something internally is triggered it's a beautifully cast little device internally you guys are going to enjoy this um and again there's no way in god's green earth that third-party companies can do this okay they're not going to do that it would be even more expensive. So by, by topping off before a trigger, okay, you'll be able to get your cartridges refilled, if you will, to a level that would exceed the original level, even by a few ml. So as long as you do this religiously, in other words, Depending on your, you're going to have to experiment. You're going to have to explore your habits. So if you are a one print a week user, then maybe you don't have to do this, but every month. But if you are a 10 print a week user or more, then maybe you have to do this weekly. Well, you'll have to systematically take out each cartridge, put it upside down. In other words, on a scale, if you want to. A scale gives you kind of a, a, a visual uh, idea how much the cartridge weighs as you add ink. And we know what the full weight is going to be plus a couple of more ml. And so even though we're going to do this visually, once that's, when that exit port becomes wet, then we know it's to the top. But the weight will also help you um, as the cartridge is being filled. But you cannot go beyond a certain point. Or you'll trigger something internally, okay? That can be reset back, but again, patience. 
grasshoppers. You're going to wait until next week because I don't want to divulge what he has come up with. Okay. This guy kills me. Okay. The, the, the smarts that he has. Although I will second the issue noted on the spongeless refillables. They do leak after some amount of use. They're sponges refillables. I thought they all had sponges. Interesting. Yeah, that that's seal. That's what that's what determines the the reliability. Okay. And I don't know how they can do a spongeless cart on that type, particular kind of printer. Chipless only windows. So chipless solutions. Is that what you mean? Um, Robert, are you able to do uh, Zoom? Okay. If you can, I can have you come on. After we get done with all of this, we're almost at the bottom already. After we get done, if you're able to do Zoom and you're at home and you can uh, access, I can send you a link via the chat that you can then click and access this show. You just have to disconnect your way or, you know, not, not, not listen to the YouTube version. You just you can just um, kill the audio on that by. Uh, I think there's a little speaker button on the uh, YouTube. You can just disable that. That way you can just hear yourself talk in StreamYard because you will be actually on screen. If you decide to do that, I'll guide you through that. I mean, once you get that to work, it actually does work. Okay. Uh, I was thinking of shimming the latching mechanism with tape. So ha have you actually gone inside to give three or four mils more pressure on the gasket? No, there's no need to do that. We'll, we'll show you. I'm, I'm serious. We'll show you. Nathaniel Booth, just in case I have an Epson P800. Did you want to try for that, Nat? Have you uh, put the uh, I want to win on my video description? Not the description, but the uh, comment section. My firmware all update also said installation failed, but after I restarted the printer, it showed that it installed to the new chipless version just fine. So that is your, you use chipless solution, okay? Um, not ink chip. Okay. And so then what happened? Are you now chipless? Were you able to install your your um, activation serial number? And did it generate your recovery code? Right. Okay. You don't want to come on? My Epson 4800 has a big clog up due to vacation, I had to take the print head apart. So could a magic bullet. You are, you are a beast. I would never even think about doing that. Wow. Okay. Congratulations. I hope that solved it. If you guys want to see the um, mother of all clogs, I'm going to show you later. But pre get, be prepared. This is unbelievable. I don't know whether this is real or somebody just pulling my leg. Spike, five, nine, seven. Madison, Wisconsin. All right, my friend. How's the weather over there? Charles Ingalls says, every installation with chipless solution has had the same installation fail. Yeah, that's what I heard in their, in their, in their very own form. But in the end, the update work, I've done it on work for so... So yeah, so that is... So now you're... Now it's okay. Okay. This is what I want to get. Um, are you are you satisfied now you have a fully working chipless 15,000? Giovanni's Bombus Leon. Nice name. Is there any cleaning circles reported? Clean cycles reported for the 
Pro 300? I, I would assume yes. Uh, but who has one yet? Uh, not too many people. I mean, mechanically, they're not that different. W. Anderson says, hi, all. Rick Johnson is here. We have confirmed that CLI 42 cartridges will work on the Pro 200. Or are we assuming a chip? Oh, okay. You're asking a question. Physically, yes, they will fit. Or are we assuming a chip transfer of the Pro 200 chips to the CLI 42? If you want to go that route, yeah, but I, I don't see the point. Uh, the chip will no longer be an issue because you have to disable ink monitoring after each each original Pro 200 cartridge goes empty. You can replace it with one of yours, refill with, say, Precision Colors inks. Okay? It's not going to report anything. It's just going to ignore it. So, yeah, that would be the option. The only advantage of that is we can see the sponges. We can see through the cartridge. We cannot see through the cartridges of the Pro 200. Ultra 707 from Connecticut, Canon Pro 100. Charles Ingalls, he has an XP 15,000, PA 100, W Workforce uh, C 5210 from California. So, Charles, the um, PA 100 is working okay. I think maybe you already said that. I just wanna, I just wanna verify that the PA hundred is working okay, and you had the the same problem you had before. So I think I will recommend people to use the chipless solution method. I would just provide them with the serial number. Sean Meyer, hi Jose, first time refiller here. I, is there a drying time on the PGS seventy two? I think you already asked that. There isn't. Uh, you just, in fact, when they go empty, just refill them. No need, no worries. Just make sure you don't let them dry. Empty, refill them. Badger tail, Scott Durham in New Mexico. Is that it? Yeah, New Mexico. Canon Pro 10 and another one in a box for the future. Awesome. That's the way to go. The sprinters are gone, folks. These, are, these were the best sprinters Canon put out. They're gone. They're gonna be like the most, the most. Um, what what's the term as uh, when something is almost non-existent? You know what I mean. Um, the most, you know what items in the business. That's why I keep mine in a box or right behind the door next to my Christmas tree that I'm gonna be moving up in the next week or so. Waiting, waiting. Eco Tank XP fifteen thousand. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, that'll work. That'll work just fine. Yeah. I'm gonna be reporting on whatever Precision Colors offers me uh, next week. See how that works. As far as what I saw today, awesome. I was looking at an Eco Tank for sublimation uh, work, but. They're kind of expensive. The one that I was looking at was $600 from Epson. Nico says uh, 8350, 8320, the same. 8350 is the same. Okay. All the European market. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That's why. I don't know why they do that. Miner's Cat. What monitor you have, Jose? I have a... Nothing too fancy. Let me read what it says here. So an HP. When I bought my... First HP computer, this came with it. Uh, this was like 500 bucks for that monitor. HP W2408 vivid color window, I mean, widescreen LCD monitor with brightness panel, blah blah blah. Nothing special, it's not. I mean, it calibrates beautifully, but again, it's nothing special. It's about almost 10 years old now, still working just fine. Hopefully, nothing will happen now. Sean Meyer says, I am using the quick fill method. Awesome. That's it. Uh, I'm sure you're talking about the Pro 10. All my weights from were on point, but I got pulling on a page I follow, and I... Uh, pulling on a page means you have 
ink leaking out of the printhead, okay, or the um, it's picking it up from the perch pad. Is that what we are we talking about the Pro 10? You said you used the quick method. Let me know. Hello from Denmark, Cliff Fit, P600, bit late tonight. No, you're not too late. You're fine. You are. We're just getting started here, brother. My grandpa passed it on to passed it to me. I just have to take it. Oh yeah. Okay. Well. Ah. Uh, good lord. Um. It would be just out of the question to use OEM inks at this point. Um, this printer had constant, they refer to it as clogging problems, constant, constant. And you went through all sorts of cleaning cycles constantly. And not only that, uh, uh, Epson would just say, hey, you need a new printhead, that's all. No, it wasn't that, it was other problems the the dampers the little the little compartments that hold ink on the printhead were bad they were leaking they leaked air they didn't they did not seal properly um a, a handful of people had no problems but like 90 something percent of the people that owned that printer were constantly dealing with clogs air i call them air clogs because it's not really a true clog a clog is you don't use it and it's dry this one might be really really clogged and uh, unless you're a printer mechanic i would not touch it with a 10-foot pole i'm sorry i mean that's that's just my my point i'm trying to be honest that's why they replaced it they replaced it with the uh, 5000 and so far no one's complaining they solved the problem they knew what the problem was they knew exactly what the problem was all righty Pom palombian from belgium Pro 9500, you are from the other form, my, my friend, I remember you. Pro 10, refilling, found the spare, oh, great, awesome. Got a new, a new spare Pro 10 today. Nathaniel Booth. Yes, so you did put that on the, um, on the video, the script, not the description, I keep saying that, in the video comment section. Because that's, I have to access that. What I do is I, I, I have a um, random picker um, tool. I load the URL of the video, and then it looks at the comments, and then it will randomly pick one. And so, like I said, it has to be someone with a, with a uh, P800 from the U.S. And also running on Windows. All right, so there you go. That's 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 what I I want people to experience. Hopefully that'll be the case. Dirk Collard, uh, I profiled my Pro Twenty One Hundred with for a paper from with Spider Print. Your favorite strawberry test print shows a great picture, but with a violet cast on the blue band on the RGB uh, YMC part of the picture. Anything I can do. Uh, does it look neutral? Does th does the central picture look neutral? Those those extra bands are. Don't worry about those. Those are to. Those are simply there. Those transitional bands are simply there to detect whether the printer can produce a smooth band. Okay, a smooth transition without any any gaps or or banding or a jump from this shade to that shade. It has to be smooth. Even if it has a little bit of a banding, don't worry about it. You will never see that in your normal prints. So let me know if the central... Hang on. We're looking for this. The central picture. It may not be neutral here because I'm lighting it with my monitor, which is full of different colors right now. So let's just go back a little bit. Let, let the uh, LCD light it, the LED light it. The central has to be neutral. This right here. 
and the band dark all the way to light okay that's what you should be looking at don't worry about these too much okay that is that is looking for banding right here and not necessarily color rendition all of those colors are out of gamut anyway they're there for some time in the far future when printers can actually print those colors we may never reach that point Ultra 707 says, I didn't know there was a Canon Pro P200, a Pro 2, a Canon Pro 200. Is it a new printer? Yeah, it's the replacement for the Pro 100. And uh, what it did is it just added um, some anti skewing technology. Um, you know, I've never had any kind of skew problems with my Pro 100. So I don't know whether that was really needed or not. And I don't know what else they added. It's, it's, they, they have some pretty good. Pretty good new features that actually sounded relatively inviting to me. I did a, I think we looked at the specs last time in uh, last last Sunday. So if you want to go back and look at that, you will see what I covered. And uh, if I was a first time user, yeah, I would definitely. And I, and I wanted to print on non matte type paper because that's what dye ink uh, prefers and excels at printing on on glossy luster satin semi-gloss barita coating any of the fine art papers that have that barita barium sulfate coating they call it barita um it has a bit of a sheen uh, there are many papers like that they call them soft gloss rag that sort of thing uh it excels at that it, it actually does a really really neat job and printing on those types of papers with pigment inks unless you have some sort of gloss enhancer like the canon printers do some of them not all of them epson printers really don't have too many models with gloss enhancers you may end up with a bit of a, a gloss differential problem where if you have a border the border will be a lower gloss level than where the ink was laid and certain colors will actually have more gloss than other colors reds and greens may have a different level of gloss side by side you see that it kind of bothers me so using a printer with a gloss enhancer will erase that will take care of that problem well printing on 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 a dye ink printer on those types of papers there's no such problem it does not have it okay it just doesn't exist it'll be just perfect let me increase this a tiny bit. There we go. That's a little bit, uh, maybe too bright. I'm using it literally at the lowest level. There you go. All right, so something like this. Let me hide that. Something like this would have different levels of gloss as you angle. But because it's dye ink on a on a semi-gloss paper or luster paper, there is no such thing. There is nothing but even amount of gloss, regardless of whether it is bright red or or dark colors like this. In other words, a lot of density involving black and compositing of colors to create a dark neutral tone. Uh, no problem at all with gloss. It's all equal, equally the same throughout the whole picture, as you can see. Okay, if this was pigment, you would see. You would see, especially if some printers, they don't have um, too many that have a gloss enhancer. And so that that ink has to be what they call micro-encapsulated. Epson does that on purpose to allow you to have a smoother surface texture and less, less gloss differential. That's very important. Third-party inks, on the other hand, pigment inks have a huge amount of gloss differential. So be aware of that. When you switch from OEM to a third-party source, you're going to now see gloss differential, period. You may end up having to spray these resulting prints. Robert California sought after, sought after what? Sean Meyer. Hello, I mean, Jose, thanks for answering my questions. 
I should have stated that after using the quick fill method, I got pulling of in the paper. All my weights were spot on. Um, I don't know. I have never had any kind of leaks. I don't do the, the quick method. I just dribble. And as soon as I see ink pulling on the sponge, I squeeze, blot, and let it relax again. And I've never had actual pooling of ink on prints. So something is either overfilled and it's literally running right through the printhead onto the uh, paper itself. I, I can't think of anything else that could be causing that. Yes, my 4800 work as new. Not too difficult to take the Epson printhead apart if you have the time and tools to do the job. Yeah, that's the problem. And I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to properly do that. I was a technician for Ilford paper. Okay, there you go. So you do have a background in that. I do not. You're the guy that everybody would have to have as a friend <laughs> if they were into printing. You would be the go-to guy. Sean Meyer says, I was thinking it was B BC. I flushed. Then, then immediately refill the cartridges. Should I extract all of the ink, decompress the bag, and try? Yeah. Yeah, do that. Recompress the bag. And this time, just dribble, 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 uh, fill it. Okay? It'll take longer, but it's a little bit more controlled. You don't want to over, over um, pressurize that bag. Joseph says, I really want to give these printers a shot since I can take the printheads apart. Don't take them apart. Do not take the print hits apart. Um, that's not a good thing. I'm, I mean, do whatever you want to do. I'll just say that. But I really do not do not recommend you taking apart the print hits. They are not meant to be taken apart. Okay. But again, just to do what you want to do. You didn't um, have to buy that printer, let's just say. Charles Ingall says the EcoTank 512 ink set exactly matches the XP15,000 for four colors. Only need OEM cartridges aftermarket for the red and gray. Just be sure to use the 512 PK and not the regular K, which is pigment. Yeah. I'm going to be provided with inks that are have been tweaked already. Believe me. Believe me. So that ink is not going to be a problem. But thanks for the... Uh, Info and the hint. Appreciate that. Yes, I'm going to show you that. I'm almost there. Almost there. Yeah, um, you're not seeing many deals on Canon printers anymore. That's because there aren't any. And there will not be any for a while. I used to see them all the time. You can get them basically 100 or close to free after rebase. That's a, that's that's a that's a long and gone. And the reason was um, before all of this stuff happened. Okay, Canon introduced the Pro 100, and they gave it away for free, as long as you purchase a Canon DSLR. Okay, so you got a printer for free, and maybe you were not at all interested in printing, and so then you sold it locally on on Craigslist. For a hundred dollars, and you were a hundred dollars ahead, right? It also came with fifty sheets of paper, thirteen by nineteen. So you would sell this for one hundred and fifteen bucks at the paper. Why not, right? You never wanted to print anyway. Well, the printer was actually being sold for five hundred dollars. That was the actual price. Once they stopped giving away the printers, what they did to remain in the game, in other words, keep that interest in that printer. Um, they started offering these rebates, and the rebate was originally like 300 bucks. So you got your printer for like 200. Well, they lowered the retail price to nearly, gosh, I saw some where you would pay 300 bucks for the printer retail that was a discount from retail 
300 bucks for the printer, 250 buck re, uh, rebate, free box of paper. That's $50 value right there. So you paid $50, but really you got a $50 box of paper. So net zero. Okay. Then they they adjusted the retail price back up, and you were getting it for a hundred bucks net or fifty dollars net, somewhere around that. Forget about it. That's gone. The Pro 10 never really got into this type of rebate system. Uh, there was a company that was actually at Christmas time, practically giving them away for ninety nine dollars. I mean, the Pro 10 for ninety nine bucks plus shipping. There was a catch. You had to call and talk to a specific person in the store and he would set up that special deal for you forget about it those those deals are gone now now we got on the canon side we got the pro 300 which is their supposed to be the replacement of the pro 10 but in reality is a mini version with two less colors than the the pro 1000 okay it uses the same ink family as the pro 1000 it just doesn't have red no it doesn't have blue what else and one of the grays, something like that. So anyway, um, is that really worth it? I really would not consider buying the Pro 300. Why? I got a Pro 1000. Why should I bother? I got a Pro 10. Why should I bother? But for a brand new printer user that is care, scared of a 17-inch capacity printer, maybe. But it's kind of expensive, man. The Pro 200 replaces the Pro 100. And we already talked about the uh, inability to really do what we are accustomed to doing as far as refilling. You got opaque cartridges, blind filling. You don't know what the condition of the sponge. We suggested that you can use CLI 42 cartridges. Again, you're going you're gonna to do away with ink monitoring after the, your original color yellow were, you know, runs... Uh, empty, remove it, and put the refilled one. You've already eliminated the uh, ink monitoring for that channel, and now you're running blindly again, but at least you get a visual you know, view of what your cartridge looks like. How often do you refill after you have eliminated all eight? In other words, you have disabled ink monitoring on all eight, and now you're running on CLI 42s, okay, and filling with some of, somebody else's inks. You're going to have to develop some kind of system every month, maybe, every three weeks. How often do you print? You don't know, right? Hardly nothing or a lot. So that will determine how often you open the lid, let the head come to the center, change position, and check the cartridges. But when you do that, you trigger a purge cycle. Okay, whether you refill or not at that point. Okay, if you do that, you, you might as well top everything off. Okay, you might as well. But keep in mind that a purge cycle will be generated. That's ink into the internal pads. How long does it take to fill the internal pads? I haven't filled them yet. Seven and a half years. Next August will be eight years. My eighth birthday for that printer. It's about 10 years old, folks. Almost. So it is, it, it wasn't, it was due for a, an upgrade. You know, whether it is a great upgrade or not, we'll, we'll never know until we test them side by side. And it would have to be on OEM inks. I am on my second Pro 100, and now I am getting. I'm going to need a backup eventually. Well, here's what Mike and I were talking about. You can get them on eBay, just no inks, no print hit. Okay? Just just the printer body, the chassis, brand new for very long. I mean, they charge you, kind of overcharge you on shipping. They're tricky. Are they actually are they actually paying that much for to ship it to you? Probably not. I think they're pocketing a portion of that charge. But, you know, maybe $100 total cost for a body, a chassis. And then if you print it, it's still good. Then you just simply transfer the printhead over 
to that new body and uh, install cartridges and you're good to go. Otherwise, you're going to be paying $600 right now for a Pro 100. You might as well go with the Pro 200 at that point. Dirk says in, as the central picture is very much okay. And also the print printed other. Then don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. Charles Ingall says on the 48... 100, 4,900, my understanding is many issues tracked down to poorly implement the capping station that leads to other failures, dampers, heads, etc. I'm glad you mentioned capping uh, station. What is the purpose of the capping station? Let me use this prop right here, 9,500 Mark II print head. So the capping station is where this portion, this, this nozzle plate, if you will, sits on top when the printer is not operating. It just got done printing, it's done, and it parts itself. And it seals against that capping station. It's the same thing as the seals in these printers. These seals have to seal, okay? If they don't seal, you get leaking. Either liquid can leak out, or air can leak in to the printhead. So you get a seal that doesn't seal. So what happens? Ink is either leaking literally onto that perch pad, or air is literally leaking and aspirating itself into the printhead. Well, when you print, you're going to get gaps. And gaps, everybody thinks, are clogs. A clog... Either it's a physical clog due to a particle that's too large to pass through that little tiny opening, or it's sat for six months and it's literally dried. Okay. But these are, I call them air clogs because really they're they're caused by air. So you run a cleaning cycle and it doesn't do squat. Why? Because a cleaning cycle relies on that purge unit to seal against that bottom plate so that vacuum can be effectively applied and ink can be sucked out of the printhead along with possible air ejected into the internal uh, wasting container. And then when you print, your printhead is now primed with nothing but ink. So you will get a perfect nozzle check and subsequently a perfect print. Then tomorrow, you come back and you got another air clog. Okay, it's that perch pad. And there were other problems. Like he said, the dampers also were not sealing correctly. It's, it's It was just a nightmare. It was the worst thing they've ever created. It had a great future had it worked. Okay, because the ink set was fabulous. And the results, I've seen results from it. They were, I saw a gallery show that had been printed with a 4900. And yeah, that one worked perfectly. But I think he had Epson people there with him as well. So it was one of, one of those dual things where they were pushing the printer. And also this photographer's fabulous um, images printed on the 4900. But that one particularly worked. None of the ones you guys had worked correctly. That was a big catch. Once I cleaned the ink from the ink tray, removed the cards that I refilled and installed OEM cartridges, printed and returned to normal. It seemed like the cards I refilled were releasing too much ink. Were those OEM as well? I hope there should be absolutely nothing modified, changed in any way, shape, or form when you refill your OEM Pro 10 cartridges. I've been I've been refilling the same set for years now, the same exact set. Mm 
Okay, let's see where we are here. Wendy, Jose, how much ML can go into the waste cartridge of the Pro 1000? Oh, gosh. You know what? It depends. It's really screwy. Um, I have three filled units right now. And they all weigh different amounts. <laughs> um, I, I totally forget what the original weighs empty and what any of those three weigh when they're declared full. It's drastically different amounts, I'm telling you. Um, yeah, if you've only used 37 ml of ink, uh, that means you're probably wasting a lot more ink than you're laying on paper. And that's that's the catch about the Pro 1000. You just got to print like there's no, like your life depended on it. So that you, you use, not waste, you use more ink, a ratio of more ink on prints than you do on that predetermined number of cleaning cycles you will always develop or, or, or trigger. So the, they will be triggered anyway. So... Why not use your ink for creating prints a lot more than you when you know you run those clean cycles? So if I was to print 100 prints a week, large ones, I would be using a lot of ink, of course, but I'd be using it for print production. And I would be running the same number of cleaning cycles, whether I print or not, okay? And so my ratio is gonna be hugely toward the production of prints rather than the production of waste ink. It's it's a hard concept to accept, I know, but that's the way it works. I want to win chipless solution XP 15,000 USA. Can't wait to. Uh, I'm not doing a 15,000 USA. Um, unless they provide me, I don't think they will ever provide me anything new because I don't, I'm not going to have very nice words to say so that one you will have to purchase my friend i'm guessing COVID. um the uh, let me go back i have a p800 that i'm giving away and that's it and that will be it unless they solve that if they solve that installation problem and explain to people what they will encounter when they try to install that eventually it does work but you need patience okay and you should not need patience. It should be a pretty straightforward process. So, yeah. I'm guessing COVID has negatively impacted supply of Epson, Canon, Brother, and other manufacturers that seem to have escaped major supply issues from HP. Where is HP manufactured? That's a good question. Epson and Canon, I think, is in, in the Orient. Those factories closed down in the early spring. And whatever we had in stock in warehouses, U.S.-based warehouses, all we had. I think it was probably even worse in Europe. I got a super chat here for whatever that is. Let's look it up. Appreciate that. It's a buck thirty-two. That'll buy me a drink, definitely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, man. All right. Charles Ingle says, on you on your fifteen thousand refillable cartridge, make sure be sure to snip off the plastic stub where the chip would normally go. It can interfere with the corresponding electrical contacts on the printer. I'm telling you, man, I am not going to probably use that. But I, I know what you mean. I was worried about that, and I asked that to uh, Mike. So do you mean that little thing right there that protrudes out or the side ones? Yeah, I want to make sure. In fact, Mike says uh, um, to um, do that as well. 
that was worrying me at first. I, I, I have to agree with that. All right, printed every day, though. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, Pro 1000 will do what the Pro 1000 wants to do, and so you're right. It seems a little bit, a little bit um, off. Uh, I. Again, I don't have an empty one. Um, somebody's going to send me one of theirs. I think they don't have a Pro 1000 any longer, and so they put one in the mail for me, and it should be arriving relatively soon. Let me see if I can, if I can find that email. But they were going to send me one, and so now I should have a... I think I, I have one already still. Let's see. I'll look for it later. Anyway, so yeah, I should I should weigh that one before I install it so that I, I know what it, it weighs. Okay, snip off that plastic, print it every day, multiple images. But anyway, now I got to go back to yours. I only use 37 ml of ink and paper, according to the account. Yeah, so the waste is only one third full. So how much ink in the lines? Only one third, there's so much ink in the lines. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of ink in the lines, absolutely. Um, I don't know exactly how much, but if you notice from your initial installation, how much the levels drop. So yes, there is a lot of ink in the lines, the internal compartments and the dampers inside the printhead. There are 12 dampers in that big printhead body. And also ink had to be expelled. It had to be expelled to ensure that the printhead was totally primed with ink. So that initial is scary. That, that initial setup is a little bit scary, but not to worry that ink is still living happily inside your printer. As to how much it weighs, again, my three have weighed different amounts of, of, in other words, if you assume that the weight equals ink inside the cartridge, they've all been totally different. So really strange. All righty, Henry Stoffel. Boston 800, P800 user, hit the like button, 59, watching only 27 likes. I know, I know, it's difficult. It's difficult. You cannot force people. <laughs> and yes, Rick, I looked it up, and that's what it is. That'll buy me a good, one of these fancy drinks right here. Hello, Stefano. Thank you, my friend. I couldn't find that other t-shirt I looked for it today, but maybe I gave it away. Too presumptuous. I thought weird numbers. I contacted the support and will tell you, will tell you no if there is something interesting in their reply. Okay. Let me know what they say. I know how they act. Just let me know what they say. Really look forward to method of refilling the OEM cartridges. Yeah. Um, there's also another method that can be used if you were to find some empties, okay, where that triggering, that internal trigger of that device has already taken place. And so, again, Mike really is good coming up with these, these fixes, but that one, that one just involves something I really do not want to get involved in. It involves, um, dissecting part of the outer shell to get to that. Yeah, no, I don't want to do that. You would have to seal a little hole in that in an internal valve 
that then triggers this very amazingly manufactured piece that then holds that diaphragm and keeps that that bag from expanding back to full okay when you fill it full of ink you want it to be full capacity it will prevent it from doing that so there is a way that you can do that and uh, again if you just don't wait too long you should be able to top it off and keep that triggering from occurring okay All right, Ayo Crod. I just jumped in here, but I follow you and watch all your videos. I have Image Pro Graph Pro 1000. I'm trying to print on canvas, but I can never get the color to pop. Well, canvas is just not, especially matte canvas, is just simply not the same as printing on a, on a, on a material with sheen and you know, a little bit of shine. Uh, what I suggest is make sure you're using the um, uh, fine art setting. Make sure you're using that. That will then force you to load from the manual feeder, and that will trigger the PK. In other words, the, no, the, not the PK, the matte K or MK ink from... Uh, it will trigger the MK ink rather than using photo black, which is less uh, dense. So that will increase your contrast a little bit more. And make sure your settings are correct. Make sure you're using the correct ICC profile and also setting the driver for printing on an external video editor using an ICC profile. Otherwise, you're just not gonna get the correct color match that you're expecting. Um, try to find a canvas that's already glossy. Oh yeah, it's fantastic, glossy or semi-gloss. Some companies have it, all right? That'll help a lot when it comes to pop, but canvas is normally very, very uh, subtle, let's just say. Not, not that, not that uh, um, live like regular photo paper is. I like that one. Yes, absolutely. I love that one. Print like there is no tomorrow. Yeah. Great idea. Hey, what's up? Art of Women Photography. Glad to have you here, my friend. Hope you have been okay in Australia. All right, let me let me shock you guys. You know what we're gonna do? Uh, let's let's see here. I gotta find this first. All right, this is scary, guys. Be ready. This is why I thought, okay, you're pulling my leg. Someone is, is pulling my leg. But I don't know. Maybe it's actually real. Facebook, okay? Oh, wait a minute. Backwards, right? Facebook. I'm actually pointing away from my monitor. My monitor is actually here. Facebook. All right. Let's scroll down, get ready. Ready? I don't think there's any audio, let me see. Here we go. You see that crud coming out, out of those inclines? Can you believe that? Can I make that bigger? Here we go. What did this fool put inside that printer? It seems to be a six color printer. And it's gotta be a um, printer that uses stationary cartridges because as you can see that is the unit that would attach to the printhead body so let's let's go let's get out of here we're going to go back and i'm going to show you a couple of images here look at that 
That looks like melted crayons, I swear. Do any of you have any idea? And what's with this, these colors? I think he converted his printer to, to, to do something. And of course, it didn't react very happily. I mean, it, it is fascinating, isn't it? What do you guys think of that? And I did ask him, it's Adamo Borak. He's been, I, I recognize that name. Um, I, I just, I remember someone being a total fake in one of the forums. And I think my, my group is becoming more and more well-known um, within these printing forums and it's being recommended to people. And I remember this Borak character. Um, is he the same Borak as in, in, the, in the movies? Yeah, I hope not. But wow, what in the world? Look at this. I mean, it seems genuine. Uh, let's see. Let me show you that, actually. Here you go. Look at this. This is like... Slivers of solidified something. It's like they're using the printer for plastic injection, or I don't know. I, I I don't even know what could possibly be causing this, or what it is that they're showing. Insane, isn't it? Yeah, I thought you guys might enjoy that. I always get some some of these questions who are your audiences when you when selling funny canvas prints i didn't know there were funny canvas prints so i have an epson eco tank 2720 using ink pot ink <sighs> these these ink names and these sources and a sub 125 gram paper every time i print out an image that has a gray or gray tones it prints out brown tans and tones then when it press when i press the image it turns out brown as well what are you talking about He must be talking about sublimation. Or is he talking about um, iron-on type transfers? Does anyone know that the reason might be? Yeah, your inks. Your inks are horrible. And, and also your, your um, process is not correct. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Somebody gave up on Photoshop and went to Luminar. I downloaded a trial, and I'm going to go ahead and try it out. And if I like it, I'll do a couple of videos on it, possibly. But I, right now, I'm using you know Photoshop and Lightroom and basically the whole suite for um, video and image production. QMH1 was on sale for... Um, $49.99 and only $15 to renew. Uh, I think QMH Ultimate is like $20 to renew every year to the next version. So you don't have to rebuy it. Let's see, somebody just bought a Pro 1000. Going to set it up, read a lot of information, but there's still a thing that's not clear to me about the internal calibration. I understand that it does not that it does not worries what, but it is okay to do it just one, just on one, just one on for example for pro luster paper. 
or need it be done for all papers you use. Okay. All right. So as we have covered in the past, and obviously, you know, these people are just first timers in the in the in the uh, group or possibly um, printing. So let me let me just use this one as an example. XP fifteen thousand back there. How many of those do you think were cranked out at the factory? Just guess a hundred thousand. Okay, one lot. Let's just say. Okay. Um, every one of those XP fifteen thousands output slightly different. Can you tell the difference? Possibly not, unless you get that one lemon and compare it to that one that just happens to have been calibrated perfectly. Not calibrated, but set perfectly. So you have a, a an amount of plus or minus error that's allowable in the quality control. If you exceed that, that unit gets rejected. But they're not really being tested with ink, okay? They're not. Just the internal calibration, if you want to call it that, is done and they really are not they they take random printers and actually load ink and test them but not every printer you buy has been tested with ink hardly any of them so you get one and and jane gets one across the country okay and you produce the same original image you share it you print on the same paper and you put the two prints together and you use a spectral photometer to read and certain colors don't match exactly the same visibly it's almost unidentifiable okay but spectrally it does output differently so internal calibrations only sole job is to do what to calibrate that printer internally okay not externally, internally. So what it's doing is taking your your pro luster paper, for instance. It knows you you it knows that you're printing them there on Canon's pro luster paper. You load it and you pick pro luster paper, or if you choose platinum gloss, you choose platinum gloss on the drop down menu, and the printer knows. Okay, I I I see that you chose. You know, semi gloss, pro luster, platinum gloss. I'm going to then link that job to the ICC profile that you have installed in your printer, and I'm going to imp I'm going to generate and print this set of color patches. This happens internally in the Pro 1000. You don't see it happening unless you peek. Okay, and so it knows you pick pro luster. It linked it to the ProLuster ICC profile. Okay, that's what it does when you choose to let the printer driver control color. Nothing to do with your computer. You haven't even installed it to your computer yet. It's just standalone printer at this point. Internal calibration on the panel. You choose it, install the paper, you tell it what paper. Okay. Now I said that it will access your 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 um, ICC profile. That's afterwards if you choose to do that. But you can do that before. So it knows. It knows. Don't get conf confused. It it knows what the output should be, because it knows what the values it generates are. And I guess that's embedded, ex you know, internally. Okay. So it'll print that. I think you barely see it come out. I don't remember. It's been a while. It goes back inside and it'll dry for a little bit of time and then it will proceed to read it and I guess figure out what any slight errors were in its output and then it just corrects that. So then from now on, if you tell it to accept that calibration in the driver, there's a place there you have to tell it to do that. It will from now on output at the whatever condition the factory intended it to be you see so long-winded explanation so that and jane's printer in california and joe rodriguez's printer in 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 maryland output exactly the same or as close to exact as possible and that means that if mike from toronto 
wants to order prints from both of us using the same images, same paper, same inks, either one of us can print it. And Mike will say, oh, these are wonderful. These are a perfect match because our both machines are outputting exactly the same color output. If they were not, there may be some slight difference. If Mike starts to measure colors, yeah, he is that that critical. So once you install the driver and you have connected it to your computer, this is where I should have explained. At that point, yeah, every few months later, you, you use a different batch of paper. Sure, go ahead and run the calibration again, okay? And it will, it will adjust for a slight difference in the batch, okay? Canon paper still though, okay? So the same thing, you, you've you now uh, bought new inks and you notice there's a difference, code number on the ink for batch, you run, a, run a new calibration, okay? And it will adjust for that. Will you see the big big difference? Between? No, you, won't, you really won't, okay? One thing that I remember vividly on my Pro 1000 is that after I did the internal calibration, and I didn't do it initially, I, I said, ah, don't need it. So at some point down the road, I did it. And then I loaded my standard image, and I printed it on, on Luster, I think it was. And I set the driver to uh, color matching ICM, and I just let it print. I, I chose the matching paper, Pro Luster. It was the best rendition of that standard image I had ever seen out of the printer. Okay. So that means that on its own, with nothing else poking and, and, and you know, inducing this or that, it output perfectly. Okay. So now I can rely on that machine. Whatever I sent to it, whether it's correctly edited in a correctly calibrated monitor or not, it will take that information and reproduce it. You see what I'm saying? You might be sending it prints images that are not what you see in your monitor. Okay. How is that possible? Well, it's possible because what you see in that monitor is incorrect. Okay. That's where calibration comes in. And we're going to check this baby right here. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at it. It's kind of cute. Very cute. Well, don't break it already, Joe. Comes with this little USB cord. It's got the calibration surface here. It's got a tripod screw, and I believe this is for possibly calibrating uh, your projector, your digital projector. So this is the surface is going to calibrate against right here. So this is your control. So it's going to check to see the value of white that it sees is correct. And so it's going to shine the light and it's going to adjust the temperature of that light slightly up and down until it's calibrated. And that's, that's what that's about. And so once you do that, then you're ready to do your monitor calibration. And we'll do that. We'll do that on a video this coming week. So it should be fun. And then I'll do a comparison to see if we had an improvement. It's going to be very hard to uh, determine, I'm sure. But if it does a great job, then, hey, this is about 290 something, I think it was. And so, you know, maybe a little bit more expensive than, say, an x -Rite, um What is the, the cheaper one display? Um, but we'll see. We'll see how good or how bad it performs. And if it does a great job, I'm going to, you know, promote it. All righty. Let's see. I got a, I remember this lady here before claire sloan yeah she's been around for a while here with us hey guys uh have you any have any of you find found a solution for the fickleness of the canon accounting manager on both my computers it randomly will stop being able to acquire the job info for weeks at a time and then we'll equally randomly start picking up the jobs again it's really annoying 
it is not the USB Wi-Fi connection as I have the problem on both computers and where the printer is connected via USB and other. So yeah, um, a lot of these things only work with USB. And so, but she's stating that, and I think what she means is basically getting that per job total cost. For those of you who don't know what the accounting manager is, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think there's a solution to this problem. So Jerry says, hello, Claire, same problem here. I have no thoughts on solutions to what is going on. Mine just stopped working altogether. Stopped in July and nothing since. Claire says, yeah, I remember you posting that. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. I thought there was a solution. Maybe not. Make sure you have a dedicated IP address on the printer. Uh, I don't know whether I actually installed that when I had to um, reinstall Windows. I actually um, put a new hard drive in my computer and uh, did a clone. Whether I actually lost that. Let's see if we can access that. No, I don't have it installed. So normally you install this accounting manager and all it's going to do is going to keep track of your jobs. And um, I think that's actually also kept in the, gosh, let me see, Canon. I think that is kept maybe also in the printer. I'm not sure whether we can actually access that, but I think I think maybe it's just software based and it, you know saves it on your computer or does it save it elsewhere? Who knows? Uh, but basically what you do is you you enter the cost of your inks, you enter the cost of your every paper that you use and every size that you use. And then after that has been entered, it'll supposed to then keep track of all of your jobs. If you if that's a concern for you, in other words, you want to figure out what a, a a job costs to print, including the paper and including the ink. It's not going to include waste ink generated. If it does that, it's not going to include that. But there's also a way to figure out what your total usage of ink is. And then if you can then subtract what you use that month for print jobs, okay, then whatever is left over, that was that was waste ink generated. Or you can just simply take your waste cartridge out like um, Wendy's been doing and um, weigh it weigh it every, every couple of weeks and see what kind of uh, increases in weight. So every gram so-so equates to one, one ml of ink. Not perfectly, but it, it, you can you can use it pretty pretty accurately. <clears throat> Somebody uh, has been uh, refilling their Pro 100 first time. They've been following our videos here. That's good. What is this? Did I do this? Let's see if something loads. PDI test image J. I don't know. I don't know what that was. Hmm. Doesn't work, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. There we go. You're gone. All right, IPF 8100 for Canvas prints. Now I changed my computer on a, to an iMac. The problem is I can't install the driver for my for that printer because the printer is not supported by Mojave. What can I do? Hey, that's the typical thing that happens. I lost it. Here we go. Let's find it again. Ugh. That, I don't know about you guys, but that just drives me crazy. 
Okay, we were way down here and here. So yeah, um, it all has to do without getting into big, huge arguments here on each company, whether it's Windows or, or, or Apple, getting together with the printer companies. Um, apparently, they seem I seem to have no problems. I can update, you know, my Windows update updater is automatic. I don't know what version of Windows I'm on now. Where is Windows 10, but that's like a never ending, you know, version. It just keeps updating. I have not lost a single printer, okay? Using the original drivers that I installed. Now the 8100 is rather older. It's an older printer, but still I can go back and install I can download the the Epson 1400 driver. I already done it and install it and it's installed. No problem. No problem with that old driver being recognized by today's Windows 10. Why doesn't that happen when Mojave gets installed? Why why should it why should it reject it? You see that that's, there's no reason for that. So again, I don't want to start a, a discussion, um, a political discussion on that matter. But yeah, there should be, you know, there should be no, no difference. It should have support. Apparently, it, it does. Um, this guy may have found the the uh, resource for him. Maybe I don't know. Let's see. See, I got Windows 10. Let's go ahead and pick. Can I do that, Mojave? I love the way they name the versions and we'll pick um, software drivers no driver you see what I mean that's ridiculous no driver so what are you gonna do now you cannot print you got to go back to the previous version now why did you update why must you update why do people do that now if I'm not printing, if I have a if I have a Mac computer and I just use it for my office work, for fun, for watching movies, doing all kinds of other fabulous things that Apple just surpasses any other uh, operating system at. They really make things to be fun and there's no problem automatically installing things. But they haven't really solved the printer driver problem. Okay, I don't understand that. And um, it, it happens every time there's a major update. And I wish that wasn't the case. I want I want everybody to have a happy a happy relationship with their printers, regardless of how old they are. You know, it should not have any kind of a cause for dismay. Here's another, let's see, yeah, another Mac Big Sur problem with a Pro 1000. Let me see what that was. Yes, Mac Adobe users are facing a quad whammy in the coming months. First, the latest Lightroom Classic release version 10 is by itself a very buggy and slow performing. I'm glad I have not upgraded. Any major OS release like Big Sur can be pro problematic with many levels, especially when color management. And as you have noted, print drivers, it's not like Catalina, it's problemless or problem free. Third are the new Apple silicon max cool stuff with lots of complications with a mixture of rosetta 2 intel emulation and native m1 chip oh my goodness you lost me there okay i have no idea what you're talking about but anyway that's that should none of that should happen guys come on i i know i know that you guys if i'm a fan i will i will defend it till the ends of the world but really that should not be happening we don't need that kind of headaches. All right, let's jump over to precision colors. 
Let's see what they have. They have a new uh, main page right there. Canon Pro 10, that's nothing new. Canon 100, nothing new there. Uh oh, wait a minute. Canon 280, 281 photo blue printers. Expand the squeezy offerings. XP 15,000 in final stages of testing. Image Pro Graph Pro 100, Pro 300, sorry. What should we look at next? How about this? Let's see what they have. So this is the all of your printers, like the 8320, like the one I just recently got. So they got the ink set ready. Refill options. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, this is going to be a modification. You can go ahead and look at this if you have such a printer. And again, remember, those inks speak for themselves. Uh, they do have a, a reputation so far that they've been able to uh, stand by. Not a problem. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that would be one is pigment and then the other black would be regular um, dye ink black. The same thing here. Big uh, pigment and then your normal size. Hmm. That's just the six colors. What is this? I think it's maybe double blacks right here. Is it? Yeah, two, two times four ounce bottles of black pigment ink. So that's why it's 70, $72, I guess. These are the special plugs that you will need. They require a special diameter drill. If you want to buy a scale, you can buy one as well. This kits below include aftermarket XXL size tanks with non-resettable chips. Since the tanks are clear, the use of weighing scale is not necessarily the use of an, a weighing scale is not necessary, but the optional squeezy system can be used. So they're selling. Wait, are they selling? Oh, okay. Are they going to be selling refillable cartridges with non-resettable chips? There they are. Let's have a look. Hmm. Or are those? No, I don't think those chips are resettable. Or are they? No idea. Well, if he is selling them, they must work okay. So I may consider that. I'll have to talk to him about that next week. Refill kits for that. That's right here. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, well, non-resettable chips. Yeah, so they probably only work one time. No OEM cartridge modification is necessary. Right, because you're going to be using those refillable cartridges. Okay. See, I haven't looked at any of this stuff lately. Let's look at the new Pro 300, see what they have to offer here. So we are currently working on refill kits for this model. Please release, expect release sometime in December 2020. Hmm. The kits will be ready, complete with some excellent customized CC profiles. However, since no resetter is available, at this time, we highly recommend that you acquire a second set of cartridge Canon OEM tanks for the Pro 300. These will be invaluable when refilling this printer. Also, do not discard the orange storage clip stoppers that came with the tanks. Again, these will be necessary in the future. Now, yeah, okay. Um, so that means we're going to disable ink monitoring. There's no other way around that. No other way around that. So let's look at the XP 15,000. Nothing. It's just saying that there's going to be uh, final stages of testing. All righty. Huh. I thought maybe he had something already posted, but apparently not. What else do we have here? I think we're going to, we're going to, we got about half an hour to go. So let's look at, oh boy, I want to I talk to you guys about this one. 
But before we do that, before we do that, let me attach this. Come on, you. I'm maneuvering my uh, tabs here, so bear with me. Okay. All right, that's not going to work. Let me put that over there for now. We're going to do the discussion on the Lightroom next time. Next time. I'll, I'll let Mike have the first hour and a half or however long it takes. And then we're going to jump into uh, Lightroom and show you guys how to do a basic catalog in case you lose your images. All right. So to do to do. let me take you over to the um, YouTube comment section. And we're going to take a quick, really quick look at our entries for the video. Okay. I think that's it. All right. Let that load. So we got how many? 20. 20 applicants. Let's see. Now, this guy here worries me because he might not be in the U.S., okay? So I may have to um, eliminate him. If he comes up and he's not from the U.S., then it doesn't really matter. He doesn't need this, okay? That's what I was, why I was stating that. So Alan Garcia, hopefully he lives in the U.S. Kate Monkey. Uh, Orlean Rodot, again, this might be an overseas person with that name. Charles Engels here. I want to win Offendi Mili. Again, he might be in Italy. Who knows? Another one. Um, so I think what I will do is I'm going to include a comment. I'm going to comment to those guys and ask them, where are you located? Okay, another one here, Koloskova. That may not be here. Again, I'm just going by the names. No offense intended. All right, so that, that's gonna be the goal. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and try to verify where they are located and then go from there, okay? Let's go back to the, all right, so what kind of comments have we been getting? So people are going back and they're viewing really old, I mean, old videos of mine. Everything that I have is pretty much relevant today, unless it's printer specific. When it comes to techniques, it's the same thing. So somebody cannot print, cannot use that front feeder, okay? Our 3000 front feeder works perfectly, okay? It does, really, it does, folks. It works perfectly. You just have to tell the driver that you're going to use it. Simple as that. Doesn't work. It feeds the paper in, seems to find the edge, and loads okay. Then tells me to shut the front feeder door. Then just sends the paper back out with a paper out error. That usually happens when you don't load it correctly, okay, to... To put it bluntly and simply. Wow, Epson equals, you can read that, right? That's your opinion. Remember my video that I did uh, where I showed a bunch of uh, five by seven prints that I did, just a stack like that, from my early childhood to the present, and I called it going back in time. Well, people took me literally. So this person wants to go back in time. Six days ago, I, I told him, I'll meet you there. I'll, it's a Catherine. I'll meet you there, and then we'll go out for a cup of coffee. <laughs> All right. So Gary Lester, two questions here. Actually, two comments. I like how this printer has gray ink as well as black. The red ink most 
must improve the colors result nice video jose this is concerning the xp 15000 and it certainly does it really does remember it doesn't have light magenta it doesn't have light cyan but it has gray and gray very often can take over the function of light versions of cyan and and magenta here's a guy that i just kind of wear went off on okay i don't understand why the results using default profiles matters at all um, the quality of the ink has nothing to do with that really hmm. i'm interested in the archival qualities and color accuracy and range well guess what color accuracy and range comes that's okay forget it yeah and gloss differentials we're talking about dye ink <sighs> none of this says anything about the actual quality of the ink okay <laughs> are you serious it has everything to do if the color characters characteristics characteristics of the ink match those of oem inks that means you can use your oem profiles period you want them to match that's the whole point and goal of a third-party ink alternative if you need to create custom paper profiles to get a close match, that means your third-party inks are not good. Now, if you're just if you just mean longevity, that's a totally different subject. What are you talking about, dude? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The idea, guys, the idea is this. And I and I I don't want you guys to do this ever, but if you still insist buy some ink from china in one of those ebay sellers yeah and load your pro 100 with it just do that spend 50 spend 60 bucks buy a set of cartridges and refill them with those crappy inks and then do some test prints with the current version of the uh you know the the uh pro 100 inks from precision colors signature edition do a set of those prints remove those cartridges Pop the new ones with those other inks and see what you get. Okay. See what you get. I guarantee you, you will not be happy. This person has no clue what he is talking about, really. But again, I appreciate the comment. It is a comment and it goes ding, ding, ding for me and my channel. Um, you know, YouTube sees that as a positive. Okay. Please think, really think before you make a comment, um, especially that type of comment. Uh, let's see. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. See that people are enjoying the information. I'm glad. I'm glad. That's my goal. I am using an Epson 3880 and I generally print a few times per week. I am going to leave home for a few months and have to leave the printer behind what would be the best method to keep the printer maintained while i am gone i'm thinking that i would set up a vpn i don't know what that is is that some kind of automation system and print nozzle checks again i don't know how to print an auto nozzle check while i'm away um and keep everything from clogging up okay so q image ultimate okay q image ultimate q image one a cheaper version um you can set it to program at whatever schedule you wish and it will not print a nozzle check it will print an actual perch file a scientifically generated perch file that will keep that printer like you've been printing on it every other day okay and just load some cheap paper on it and you know go away come back two months later and every two days it will have printed a perch sheet and so the only catch, you have to leave the computer on. You have to leave your printer on. Hope you don't have any storms that knock out your power. Okay. Or power it off and come back. It might need a cleaning cycle. Two months is really not a killer for your printer. Okay. Uh, it just depends on your internal temperatures in your home. You know, if you have a very hot house or humid. If you have a humid home, it'll be fine. <laughs> Believe me. No problem.
Somebody asking me about a, a laser printer. What would I recommend? No idea. I don't print with laser printers, so I don't know. I just do not know. Windex with ammonia. What type of Windex? Windex. It's Windex with ammonia. The blue stuff, not the, not the one without ammonia. Okay, you can buy that any any grocery store in the USA. I think they have equivalents overseas. I just don't know which, you know, what the brands are. And again, it's not something you're going to expose your printhead to for days or, you know, weeks. It's, it's just an hour treatment. And then if it works, it works because the ammonia, as slow as it is, it can affect your electronics. But at the, at the level that it is, yeah, you can get away with hours of exposure to your printhead as far as soaking the bottom plate or feeding it through the tubes or whatever, uh, it will not harm it. Or just use a very good uh, head cleaner, like uh, PSO Flush, use that. And there are other proprietary head cleaners as well that you can buy. I bought an Epson 664 ink for my Canon. MG5522, quick and cheap shipment. Did I mess up? I'm pretty tech savvy, but I'm not experienced with ink cartridges. Yeah, you probably messed up. Yeah. Compatible cartridges for Canon printers are horrible. And again, they, they work at first, and then they stop working. I went to win. I went to win. Hello, Jose. I want to print a few pictures per month. What printer should I buy? Uh, that would be like, hello, Jose. I want to drive around, but only once every week. What car should I buy? Yeah. I know I sound like a snarky a-hole, right? But that's that's a question that I cannot answer. Um, did you see how many models of printers there are? Yeah. How can I, how can I even begin to suggest something? Um, any of the printers that we've been discussing are good enough for that. You know, once once every few months. Once every, uh, no, a few prints every month. Uh, it should be a little bit more often than that. Rafael Ferro Gonzalez is his name. So I'm going to go ahead and answer him later. And let's see, the Canon uh, Pro 1. Does this printer work on 300 GSM card? Well, you shouldn't be printing on card anyway because it may not be coded for inkjet printing. Not really, not really made for uh, obtaining good, good results with lots of pop like a real photo paper would. Card will cause that ink to just wick and give you a very muddy result. And even even if it's coated glossy, it's just not intended for. Inkjet printing. Wow, that's a long post right there. I'll be looking at that later. Ooh. Oh, I like to ask how reliable are these thermal print heads that are in these printers overall, like HP Office Jets? I know that, that Epson PSO heads are, are what? More robust. Mm, it's not that they're more robust. They're just built differently. Okay. Um, your thermal print heads. Okay. Everything else out there is thermal print heads. Okay. Epson is PSO, PSO, PSO Crystal, I think it's called. And I think the other brand that uses... Epson print heads is, uh, shoot, um, Rico. Okay. Rico or Rico, R I C H O. And so that's it. They are cold firing as a proprietary technology. They do not heat up. They can physically wear out. I mean, at some point, but they're not going to destroy themselves as we print. Literally, that's what print heads do. Thermal, thermal printers do that. So as you print, they're slowly deteriorating. And uh, 
if you have an HP printer or a like one of like my disk printer that's kaput right now that use uh, little cartridges that have a thermal printhead attached, a little strip that acts like a printhead nozzle set. I think after one or two refills, there is shot. Okay, so they do self destroy themselves. Now the beauty of HP printers for your office work that have print heads integrated into the cartridges. Yeah, you will pay more per cartridge, but you're really installing a new print head every time you install a new cartridge. That's the beauty of an HP printer, okay, compared to others, that you are starting off with a new print head. Now, if you have a print a HP printer that does not have that, has a built-in print head, then you're in the same boat as Canon printers. At some point, the print head fails and, you know, all of the nozzles burnt out or whatever and you have a channel that's no longer performing and the printhead is then rejected you get an error and you got to replace the printhead um that doesn't happen a lot with epson printers if at all because you're not really destroying the printhead as you print you can destroy it from maluse in other words but not just from printing okay let's just say they're more durable Okie doke. We got about 15 minutes here. I got to go eat dinner pretty soon. Let's access the chat. See who else has been chatting with us. I noticed a few more little entries here. Harold Goldberg, took you long enough, my friend. <laughs> Hope everything's good down there in Southern Virginia. Richmond is beautiful. Roberto says, hi, Jose, I'm late, but I'm here again. All right. The equivalent glass X. What are you referring to, Emmanuel? What were we talking about? Nico says, what happened with Stefano's images? They're coming, they're coming. What do you guys expect me to do, really? There's no way, like I said, there's no way I can print them live while I am live streaming. You will not see them come out of the printer. That's in the next room. This camera is unmovable. So what I'm going to do is just, here, let me, let me find those images. I'm going to put them on my, on my, um, I'm going to literally put them on my desktop. I got to get the downloads and find uh, Stefano. It's been a while, so. Maybe I already extracted them. Maybe I did not. I don't think I did. No, those are my images. I will find them later. Anyway, yeah. No problem, don't worry. Okay. Ah, the equivalent of Windex is GlassX. And that is over there in Europe, I assume. Yeah, I have been saving my OEM cartridges for the Pro 100 Canon 
but I did not save the orange clips. Well, you did a bad thing, sir. They are still refillable, or are they unusable? They're dried up now. You're going to have to flush them. Um, yeah, always save the uh, orange clips. Now, what you can do is um, order some replacement third-party clips for them and then keep them, keep them on until you decide to uh, attempt to refill them or not. They will probably have to be flushed out if I don't. Yeah, they will. And you have to have those other. You need you need um, clips like these. Let me see. Do I have any here? This kind. Okay. Not this kind. This is the kind you threw out. These will not be able to reattach themselves and be clipped on they have to be rubber banded on but these will allow you to attach okay and they stay on securely they're really really nice yeah keep those orange clips or just buy buy the third party types and throw away their old ones now these are superior Oh my God, good luck. That printer is ancient. That printer is ancient. And the inks for it were atrocious, awful. They faded so quickly under exposure to ozone. It was just bad. I had one of those printers. I did. And uh, it ended up being trashed. Um, I tried to unclog the printhead and um i destroyed it yeah attempting to do so um but good luck i mean okay remember those cartridges for those of you who do not know this model they have a a strange kind of cartridge it is sponge type cartridge you have two of them one black and then one is a tri uh five color so it has yellow light magenta light cyan like uh, regular cyan and regular magenta and um, a chip on them. And um, the problem with that was that the chip was just for the cartridge and it would keep track. And as, as long as one color reaches empty, even though the other four colors had ink in them, the other four channels had ink in them, that it would just stop working. You had to replace a complete cartridge, complete waste of ink. Um, if cleaning cycles doesn't do it, you can possibly do the move the head over some folded paper towels full of Windex or any other type of uh, um, design for cleaning print heads type product. Don't use just anything. You'll do more harm than good, believe me. So, you know, again, this is a lost cost, really. It is. I, I would not even recommend that you even try cleaning it. Okay. Um, Good luck finding inks for it. It's just too old. It's at least, gosh, at least 15, even more years old, maybe even more. It's just too old. Things just have a, a limitation. You have to you have to realize that. So there was something else I wanted to discuss. I gotta remember now. If we, if I do not remember, I'll just have to leave it at that. Okay, but I want to show you real quick. Somebody asked about Pro One Hundred. Why, why should I go out of my way to find one? Okay, and if I do find one, will I be willing to pay as much as they're selling for now? Let me increase this a little tiny bit so I can show you. These prints real quick. Boy, it's getting dark in here. So, Pro 100. Let me back up. There you go. Got to realize that the monitor is reflecting on it and adding its own color. But you can see 
that is like freaking neutral okay so pro 100 with 42 se okay now here is the i didn't label this one but it is it is labeled correctly this is the epson xp 15000 let's put these two together so because i remember i told you the 15000 it's like a huge competitor for the epson printer now come on jose hold these straight all right let me let me get that so that they receive the same amount of light otherwise it just won't be fair you can see pretty much indistinguishable i mean there might be some very slight differences so pro 100 and the 15,000 right here okay pro 100 is eight colors 15,000 is uh six but it has red and it has gray and no light magenta no light cyan or photo magenta photo cyan so three fifty if you can find them they're rare right now they're becoming even more rare um pro 100 is selling for 600 bucks right now easy on ebay ridiculous okay lucky for me i have two waiting here uh that's my go-to printer that's what i'm going to rely on for the for the next um many many years let's just say okay um so if this printer disappears yeah we're in a bind because that thing is fantastic as far as its output okay it really is now let me show you what the pro 100 does with just normal images i mean look at that this is a kiwi i think that's a kiwi yeah and if you really pixel peep these the seeds they're not pure black they have detail they have nuances on the tonalities okay this was perfectly exposed whoever shot this this is not mine okay i'm not that good apple lots of different reds on there okay blueberries maybe this way on a table yeah that's a table again come on focus just the level of detail that that silly pro 100 back when it was selling for a very low price can produce and this is uh let's see canon pro 100 this is this is not even the new inks this is i went back and i dug this up this is what the previous ink set okay not the improved signature edition ink set okay look at that so we want this now that the pro 100 is going bye-bye and the pro 200 you know may or may not be able to re refill to the level that the pro 100 can i mean we can have a reliable resetter we have cartridges that can be refilled numerous times without any problem if you do it correctly and you follow the guidelines you can do that you know 30 40 50 times no problem well we want this baby to stay with us we don't want it to disappear okay let me light this up we're gonna do something before we go bye bye hey we got some lighting now so i have a sheet of eight by ten paper loaded and let's see if i can do this without messing up royally yeah i'm gonna mess up royally let me just show you this come on now all right so partially partially is going to be on this monitor and the rest on that monitor let's see let's see if we can pull this off 
All right, so I have Q image here. Let me bring it up a little bit more. There we go. And I got this image. This is a, a image of some flowers that I turned into a painting, okay? Just using a plugin. So we have ultra premium photo paper luster from Epson, the XP 15,000, eight by 10. We're gonna check that correctly here. We got the paper feeder, the rear paper feeder, eight by 10 premium paper luster, uh, two sided printers all okay, that's all unnecessary stuff. And we're going to go ahead and let's see, we've got color and uh, da -da 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 -da. so we have this. Let me let me look at something else advanced and see what that does. Color correction advanced and ICM. Great. So that's how you get to that. That so now the printer is going to print using its own driver. Let's cross our fingers. Let's go ahead and uh, send that print job over. Let's see. Oh, wait a second. I have the wrong printer. Remember, I said I set it for. Uh, I had set it for um, what you call it, uh, wireless, right? So let's let's pick the correct printer. Oh, that's not my. That's not the printer. That's the. Uh, wrong one so let's correct here and this one right there that's the one okay i'm gonna make sure that we set everything back up see i should have done that so we don't want that we want uh ultra premium pro luster high quality of course uh let's see over here in custom advanced ICM. We don't want it to fix photo. You see what I mean? It's going to try to do a photo fix on you. We don't want that. We don't want anything to change what we created here in our edits. So make sure you uh, look at that. We got the green, the green go check mark. Let's go ahead and we're going to make sure that it actually connects to this wireless version of the XP 15,000. And it's on, it just turned on. We'll see, we haven't done a image, an image via Wi-Fi. Hopefully it'll, it'll be fine. So it's going to load that paper. Oh, you know what? Stupid me. I didn't set the uh, feeder. So it's trying to, yeah. I'm going to cancel that. It is trying to, and it's going, Jose, what are you doing, you idiot? Yeah. So we're going to cancel that job. I keep forgetting that I'm using the top feeder. So we're going to set that here in the driver. So, uh, yeah, there it is. See, auto. We're going to use the top feeder. Okay. And we're going to pick 8 by 10 again because uh, every time you change, it has to be changed. So let's make sure that everything is correct now. 8 by 10, rear paper feed, boom. Ultra premium luster, 8 by 10, and rear paper feed. Okay. Let's try that once again. I'm learning. I'm learning the ropes with this printer. Mm. Let's see. Of course, it spit out a blank sheet of paper, obviously. There you go. It is now feeding. Let's go to full size me. And we'll wait for it to print when I'll bring it over to the camera. So we're printing at high quality. We'll see how long that takes. Fine. Once it gets past that, I'll close the uh, rear cover.
and that will use a little bit more ink. But it should still show completely full ink levels. Again, remember, um, when you're printing images, don't worry about the speed. Don't worry about, you know, knocking out prints in just a minute and a half. It's not going to happen. You're not going to get the results you're looking for. Highest quality, whatever. The paper will determine the maximum quality you can access in the driver. So a matte, a matte paper. So, again, our bad. We did not set the, the, the paper size the uh, image size correctly that was my bad but look at that and if you let me let me see if i can load see that that's actually not what it looks like in real life over there by the way so anyway here we go so this is the results with basically just the driver control controlling color again this this is just lovely i love it this this printer can really really excel in producing beautiful prints with just a minimal number of colors only six and only four of those have actual color okay imagine imagine what it could do say if it had 12 <laughs> can you imagine so with just basically three colors yellow no, four colors, yellow, um, red, and magenta, and cyan. That's it. Anyway, I got I to gotta check to see what, what it is that I did wrong here. I think I, I got the, the sizes incorrect, yeah. Sometimes you have to set the output paper correctly so let's go ahead and check that there's a lot of little tricks about these drivers that you got to get right so in the paper option no document size and oh same as document size output paper so it should have done it it should have done it i don't know why it didn't do it so if this doesn't match the output for example you would set it at the same output size so it would be 8 by 10 if you want to do it manually fit to page or zoom to page whatever you want to do and so that would be one way of doing it and uh but anyway i'm satisfied with it i think it's it's fine and as you guys saw this this output uh of the um this one here this thing is fabulous yep and again, the further back you go, the more it gets the actual proper lights. By the way, I was very impressed with Mike's um, color rendition. Boy, that thing is perfectly neutral. This camera does not produce a very neutral result. So every time I try to show off a print, it's not being displayed as well as I would have, would have wished. Um, but anyway, I'm glad that you uh, were able to at least see that. Let me see if I put it over here now. I got the uh, the Q image over here. Let me let me visually match it. You guys will not be able to see that, but I'll I'll be able to see it. Oh yeah, yeah, it it does match. Anyway, what I did was move over the um, Q image, so. We'll delete that now. It's getting late. I'm getting tired. <laughs> but anyway, it's been a lot of fun. Always a lot of fun to do this type, this type of thing. So let me load up my see you next week image. Again, what I always ask everyone to do, if it's not too much trouble, is to give us a goodbye uh, entry here, and I will post them on the screen. But I think I got a couple more people here. Hang on, son. Hang on one second. 
Need a Cyber Monday sale in, on bulk inks. Yeah, I wish. Gary, the cheapest option to get OEM is the 700 ml cartridges. Corresponds to Ultachrome HD. Yeah, you get it down to, you know, just cents uh, uh, for an ml of ink. Um, most of the time, uh, like if you go with a current OEM tank, say for instance, something for the let's just let's just pick per 1000 so that comes with 80 and it costs 60 dollars. so let's do the math so we're gonna do let me put it over here so we're going to do um Let's see, $60 divided by 80, and we get 75 cents per ml. Okay, so then I'm going to I'm gonna go and give you the equivalent on, I have a source for 750 milliliter cartridges for $225. And then divide by 750. Uh, 30 cents an ml, you see. So depending on the size and volume that you buy, uh, you will drastically lower your ml per ml cost. That's really one way to, you know, have that luxury of printing with OEM. I do that a lot. I do that all the time. I'm doing it on my Pro 1000. I'm doing it on, on my Pro 10. I still have... A bunch of ink that I extracted from Pro One cartridges that I bought supposedly empty, and many had four to ten ml, maybe more, in that ink bag. I was able to extract and then just decant into a bottle. So yeah, um, the only one that I am not using OEM inks on and refilling with OEM ink is the Pro One Hundred at this point. All the Epson printers are using OEM ink from the sources, just like this gentleman here has suggested. And yeah, um, but just, just be aware that the EcoTank inks are not the very best quality that Epson can produce. Okay, be aware of that. That's why they are able to offer them at a much lower cost. They charge you a lot for the printer, and then they charge you less for the ink. So which one do you want? The printer I was looking at, EcoTank, $600. That's ridiculous, right, for an Epson printer of that the, of that character. And uh, But then the chips, the, the inks are going to be cheap. So, yeah, you save here and, and pay there or pay there and save here. And that's the game. Charles says, good evening, everybody, and keep it safe. You know, let's come in late. We'll play. We'll wait for the replay. I hope to hear something on the 8320 question. Is the Pro 100 going to be discontinued? Already has. It already has. Um, they stopped production, and now whatever's available, those sellers are going to speculate like crazy. Okay. 8320 is in production now. So what do you want to know? I mean, I just I just did it a uh, week and a half ago. And uh, right now it's upstairs working. So we're going to be doing refilling the original cartridges. We're going to do um, disabling of, of ink monitoring as we go progressively from, I have two sets of, two sets of cartridges to go through first. And then we're going to go ahead and um, modify them for refilling. Steven Budinski, I have to take off early. Pleasure as always, Jose. Have a great evening. Nice to have you. Dick Color Earth, thank you for next time from Belgium. All righty. All right, so that's it. Let's say goodbye. Let me load up my image. And by the way, before we actually do leave.
Let me just give you a very quick rundown here. So somebody was referring to these colors here. Yeah, all of this is out of gamma, so don't worry. You're looking for a very gradual transition that's able to be printed, okay? You may run across a couple of little bands here and there out of your printer rendition of this image. Don't worry about it. That's just, you know, the in, in, incapability of that particular printer to, with that profile to produce a really seamless, trouble-free, if you want to call it that, transition. These colors, out of gamma. Don't worry. Worry about this. Worry about from here to here being neutrally the same, okay, without changes of tonality. Make sure that you can see at least down to level six, okay? And the same thing at least up to like level 53 or 54, right about there. Look at the baby's faces. Make sure they look correct. You know what skin tones look like, right? Strawberries, they're edible, okay? They have to be, they have to look uh, luscious. This um, lava field right here is going to have lots of little bluish tones, lots of warm tones at the same time. Make sure that those are correctly depicted. The sun, the sun has a halo. Make sure it doesn't have any kind of greenish cast to it. Right here, this looks kind of monochrome, but it's not. It's actually full color. Look for the discs to have that rainbowy look. Okay. Look for the aspen trees to have that yellow, gorgeous look, and then that white, slightly warm bark texture. The desert shot or canyon. Again, you have oranges and browns, and then a, a sky that goes from a fairly deep blue down to an almost almost imperceptible warm magenta-ish color. You're gonna have a transition. You don't need to see any banding there. There should not be any banding there. And then these are a bunch of standard type uh, groupings that they include in all of these types of images. So that's what you need to look for when you examine the print that comes out of your printer for the first time. Okay, you wanna look at this under a very nice bright light source so that you can see. Look at, look at this under backlit conditions and see if you can see the at least from four and up. Okay, what happens is that you're viewing this image on your computer screen and basically it's, it's being backlit. Let me show you. On full. So basically, it's being backlit. So all of these, all of these um, very, very low tones may be visible on your monitor, but will probably look blocked up in your print because the print is being viewed by reflective light, and that's always going to be dull. It's always going to be much duller than what you see in your screen by backlight. So if you take your print and backlight it. You're going to sort of simulate what the screen is doing, and then you, all of a sudden you're going to see those those tones, okay, that look blocked up. They're there. They just have to be viewed under a very bright light source, and most of us don't do that. So there are methods of adjusting those last few steps on your images, okay, using using uh, uh, adjustment layers in your editing application to sort of bring and kind of decompress those images, those little tones, I should say, okay? So that is that is how you, you know, analyze this, this image, okay? All right, that is it for now. Let's go ahead and minimize this. Bring up our so long until next week. We'll play some music and go ahead and say goodbye, and I will put these up as they come up. Let's turn on the music. Bye-bye, everybody. See you all next week. It's going to be epic. Be here.